against Deuce, against Ace Nine of Hearts. Come on, Deuce. Hey, Deuce, hey, chop it up. Pull up a Deuce is this guy. Ooh. Oh, a tray? Are you gonna put a tray out there? But we, yeah, we're doing a chop. A tray? Why don't we give you a chop? Oh, I thought it was for a second. <laughs> he did care a Deuce. Tree, 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 tree. Oh, yeah. All right, we are all in. We got the KQ of Hearts against the K10 on an 8, 9, 10. I told you. DW's got a gut shot straight flush draw versus top pair, top kicker. Let's go. Needs a queen or a... Oh, the heart takes it. That's it. Straight double. Oh, and Two pair. Two pair for OFC. Flush for DW. Oh, it's uh, it's gonna be even in chefs. It's getting close. Let's go. We got KQ versus Trey Trey King in the window. Ooh, he's three. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. No, I'm almost dead now.
Good Saturday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Poker House Dallas. Poker House Live in the booth. Eddie, the Asian sensation, special guest commentator today. We got Mr. German Moneymaker in the booth with us. How's it going, Chris? What's up, Eddie? All good? Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be a nice little action pack lineup. Some returning players, some players making their 5 5 10 debut. A new player, Kim, making her return back to mid stakes poker. So it's going to be a little. Nice little Saturday afternoon action packed, I would assume. Going to see a lot of add ons top off, some big pots. What do you expect, Chris? 100%. Like when Kim is at the table, it will be 100% an action game. Like also nice dynamics there with Ford and OFC. So yeah, I'm already excited. It will be lots of fun. Sweet. Mr. Regis also seed one, good action. So it will be a great game, I'm sure about that. Yeah, so Mr. Re like Mr. Regis has played two five matches stack before. Watts played some two five matches stack before. It, they've been playing that two five ROE with Kim, and you you've been playing it as well. Danny's played it a little bit. OFC's played it a little bit. So, a lot of these players have some familiarity with each other in some capacity. So, like a lot of our regulars on this five five ten stream, we got Bridge Mike, Dwayne, OFC, Danny, and Gator. So those guys are used to playing against each other on a Saturday afternoon. It's been a while since Kim's played these in mid stakes, so I'm sure she's looking to uh, get back on the felt at these stakes. Again, Regis and Fought making their 5 5 10 debut. New player seat seven, Nate Eden, uh, reached out to me. He's played some 5 10 quarter uh, down, down the road at TCH. Played it here before post stream, so he said he wanted to get on, on this stream. Uh, extended an invite, so it's going to be really interesting this first go around for him he's never played he's probably played with some of these players in some capacity but you know not in a live stream setting so a guy with the name nasty nature should have always a seat yeah so. always <laughs> a seat well, he texted he texted me this morning and asked he's like can i use a name can can we use whatever name we want i said well to a certain degree <laughs> it's like, it's like it can't be like sexes or degrading he's like how about nasty name like that'll work so. that's okay so what's going on there so we missed the flip. Mr. Regis won the the flip. It was a hundred dollar flip, I believe, between uh, the eight players. Nate did not get here in time for for the flip, so he was not included. But Mr. Regis won the flip. So this is the first hand of the stream. Amazing so, picture by Mr. Regis, yeah. by the way. He, 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 he want, that's what he wanted to do. So we let him. We let him whatever Mr. Regis wants, he gets. So. Yeah. So we have an. Uh, so DW raised out the small blind to 75. Regis called the third blind. So and then OFC like limp called the 75. So oh okay okay okay. It's gonna check around the flop here. Six of spades. Looks like OFC is going for the VIP record today. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. He's definitely gonna have, actually. It's gonna be probably between him and Regis the highest VIP. Maybe Fuad. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I bet on OFC. <laughs> Again, Regis and Fwat haven't played at these stakes before. Let's see if DW's going to barrel again. Small little blocker bet on the river here by DW. Uh, Mr. Regis improved on the river. Yeah. Ah, and he finds that fault. Yeah. Nice hand, DW. DW taking on the first pot. I'm going to switch over to the actual live stream again. You got Eric Anderson. On Action Tracker, Big Brian and Terrell going to be switching off in the box. Eddie the Asian Sensation along with German Moneymaker. So we're going to switch over full time to the live stream now. So when, when you're commentating on these streams, like, do you, do, do you take information, like new information that maybe you didn't have on a specific player before? Uh, for sure. Like always when you watch a stream, you learn something new. And uh, yeah, I'm like I'm watching the streams anyway, so uh, doing commentary is lots of fun for me. So uh, always a nice like, new experience. So yeah, thanks for having me here. Of course. So got yesterday OFC and Danny commentating on your play today. So you get to switch roles and you get to commentate on OFC, Danny, Kim, uh, D Dub. So amazing yeah like payback time <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure you're chomping at the bits a little bit now here you got some of our regulars in the chat you got rena you got poker monkey tls frank 
Robson Alexander Nito saying, hi, guys. Don't rec recall <laughs> seeing you on the stream before, so nice to see you in the chat. So no straddle descent. Uh, Kim goes with for an open. Ford with a call, same hand. Nasty neck cutoff. Also a very wide call there. And uh, yeah, Mr. Regis defense in the big blind. No, it looks like Kim is in the straddle and goes for the squeeze. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, I think the straddle was incorrect initially, so... Again, this is 5-5-10. Five, five, you're going to see the quarter straddle. You're going to see the quarter straddle on probably... Well, OFC's in the game and Danny in the game. Yeah, so. and Kim for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Kim was in the straddle and you now going for a squeeze and gets a call by Fuad and Mr. Regis, correct? I believe so. So Eric did let me know that this hand was kind of incorrect, but in terms of he's going to go back and fix all the action. So it's going to be Kim Fuat and Mr. Regis on this hand. Yeah. So he's going back and I think it's an ace queen something board, right? Yeah, ace king queen. Yeah. So good board. Yeah, nice board for Kim. She goes for a seabird. Uh, Mr. Regis flops the gut shot. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine to uh, peel one more card. So I guess this turn will go check check a lot. Nice check. Check. I guess. Uh, yeah, both players have some kind of showdown value. The Regis check, check. should decide if he wants to bluff this card. Like like I know him, he really uh, likes to play very aggressive. So maybe he wants to bluff out a queen. It's going to be the four, very small, 400 to 1400. Very value heavy sizing. Um, yeah. Very tough spot for Kim. Um, I, I, I think if he bet more, I think Kim would be more inclined to call there in a spot like that. But when you bet so little relative to the pot. So it's like when, like when Kim calls his she has to basically decide that Mr. Regis is burning, uh, turning some kind of pair into a, into a bluff. So like, he could have something like Jack-10. But the question is if he really wants to bluff us. Very good call by Kim. She does make the call. He's going to flip over King Jack. Kim's going to see the good news. Nice hand, Kim. Gets rid of her knit button. So we are playing the knit game t here, oh, folks. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Eric's listening. I don't know if it's a, I can find out if it's a I actually like the bet there by Mr. I think if he bets a little smaller. So it's fifty dollars. We're playing the fifty dollars knit button game. So for those of you that are new to the to the knit game, it's the it's the equivalent of the stand up game except you're actually sitting down, and the last player to get rid of their knit button has to pay a fifty dollars bounty to the, all the other players. So if you look at a player and they have a yellow dot by their name, they are still in the knit game. So interesting, yeah. Yeah, it uh, creates. Like lots of interesting dynamics. Um, like what I don't like so much about the knit game is that um, sometimes when you play it for like a bigger amount of money in a low stakes game, the knit game has a crazy impact on the total game. So at some point, in my opinion, you don't really play No Limit Hold'em, you play knit game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we play. I think we played it last week where we played it for two hundred dollars in the ten twenty five, and we had all like five k stack. So it's basically $1,600 debt money in the pot. That's a lot. Well, that's why what happened, this was like lots of open race and then shoving. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Casey's in the chat from last night. Thanks for thanks for filling in last night. Ron was supposed to play last night. I texted him. He said he had a family emergency. couldn't make it. So we got you to fill in here. Look at this. Bridge might flopping bottom set. What's up, Casey? Always fun to play with you. Hope to see you soon again. Casey, I think we're gonna have a seat open next week for five ten quarter. We'll give you a week ahead of time if you want to play. If you want to take a shot at it again, <laughs> this time with more money. Bridge Mike here taking the hand down after flopping bottom set. I think a lot of these players, given the dynamics of the table, and I actually like the table. I have to look at this table distribution a little bit. I actually like the table distribution. Like you know, sometimes like. A couple of Fridays ago, not last Friday, but last two Fridays ago, Sean was in the or OFC was in the one seat, and then he had like AJ, Brian Green, and Z Fish to his left. That's like 
the worst position to be in. But if you look at the if you look at the like the the player player table distribution, it's very like kind of like even. You got some you know eight and nine seat DW and Bridge Mike a little tighter. Regis kind of loose passive. Gator can turn turn on the aggression. Kim, you know Kim and OFC kind of have some similar play styles in the sense that they they like to see a lot of flops and like they not but they navigate well post flop. So correct. Like, uh, I don't really like uh, Gator Seed, so playing out of position against Kim sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Same for Danny with OFC to his left. Yeah. But it makes it interesting. Like, very interesting uh, distribution here. So, uh, yeah, let's see how, how this guys figure it out. So, what's going on here? I think there's a. Uh, there's a $50 straddle, right? Oh, that's right. Casey's going to Florida to play WPT. So uh, whenever yes, you get me. back, we'll have a seat open. Good luck in Florida, man. Like, oh, um, so you're, you're going to be in Florida two back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, it looks like Sean is in, or OFC is in the straddle. And uh, squeeze. Good hand to squeeze with. A bunch of limbs and... Uh, yeah. A, it, it was a big rake because I think it was the the twenty five was on, so there was a lot of there was a lot of limps there. O O F C obviously he has pocket tens. We've watched him enough to know that he's actually capable of squeezing light, but he actually there had a really good hand in the in the plus one. So actually there was a double straddle on. So Danny so, yeah. put the twenty five on, and then Sean put the fifty on. So I guess so. Yeah, so that he makes was sense. Last track and then squeezes. Yeah, makes that sense. makes sense. Yeah, so. Yeah, always like dangerous to limp a lot when uh, OFC is in the straddle. So yeah. you can expect lots of squeezes there. So yeah, nice nice play by Sean. Again, a bunch of Gator fans in the chat. Got Robson, we got Thado, we got Brick, Jacob Linden. What's going on, buddy? Gonna come back and play the stream soon? From West Virginia. A lot of his East Coast friends in the chat. Straddle up to 100. Let's go DW. <laughs> DW puts on the hun hundo, so we got a triple straddle on. Again, this is 5-5-10. Five, five, yeah, it's a great 5-5-10 five, five, game. <laughs> <laughs> so DW, here Mr. Regis with the call from the cutoff. You're not going to see Mr. Regis doing a lot of pre-flop raising. He's going to do a lot of limp calling and like this, you know, like check call check call type type of player d dub here with the squeeze it looks like it's a really small squeeze though 450 that's a really small squeeze on a hundred dollar straddle if you're gonna squeeze actually a pretty small sizing yeah so i don't expect many folds here yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna squeeze what sizing would you recommend 500 600 yeah i think like at least minimum 600, 600 yeah more like 700 I like to do it like uh, like 4x plus 1 per limper, so in this spot it would be like 700. Yeah, yesterday you squeezed out of like out of position against, I don't remember what you, I was listening to it, but I heard about that. Yeah, uh, like uh, especially in a game like yesterday, um, yeah, you, you really want to give some a bad price when you play out of position. Yeah. So their sizing up makes lots of sense. Uh, yeah, also his hand selection here with King-9 uh, is like very loose, so you really benefit about folding out lots of uh, yeah, even potentially better hands. So when somebody's there like with Ace-5 or something, you really like to fold that out. Or like m maybe even like something like King-Jack, King-10. So and now he's in a very tough spot, <laughs> like playing out of position against everybody. What? Especially against aggressive players like Ford or Mr. Regis. So uh will be very tough there to realize your equity or to win the hand. All right, getting rid of the knit button. And like you said, the knit game can definitely change the dynamics of how you normally play. Uh, 100%, I, yes. I play, you know, you could squeeze a little lighter. Your, your sizing is going to be a little bit bigger and, you know, you may have to get it. I, I think you're a very patient player, so you play a bunch, right? Uh, but do you think sometimes it makes sense to try to make a move 
with the net game button with marginal type hands or just like try to pick your spot because like sometimes i feel it obviously depends on like how much you're playing for for the net game right so fifty dollars is not super terrible so it's like four hundred dollars altogether Kim here going to three bet on the button. She does not have her knit button. But uh, Kim doesn't care. Kim likes to play very aggressive, likes to put uh, yeah, lots of players in tough spots. And now Gator, very, very tough spot. And we all know Gator hates to have this knit button. So that's why he's open raising wider. And uh, yeah, tough spot if you have Kim to your left because uh, Kim is punishing this. Like yeah. <laughs> when Kim noticed that you are going to open raise wider, she's going to three bet wider. So, uh, yeah, tough spot for Gator tonight. I'm hearing this. That's an interesting concept. So that's an interesting introduction to the knit game here. Look at Mr. Regis going to get in there, mix it up with the seven. Is the seven deuce game on? I don't think it's on. He's going to make it 100. I like it. <laughs> oh, well, here's an unlucky spot. Gator works up directly behind with Kings. Yeah, he's going to make it. He's just going to call. Interesting. Oh, wow. I, I say that I, I said earlier that <laughs> Mr. Regis doesn't open a ton of hands, and here he is opened up with the seven deuce offsuit in EP. So <laughs> <laughs> D Dub's gonna defend the straddle. We're gonna go four ways to this flop. Now with the Kings here, like nine for DW, Gator with the tricky uh, slow play. Yeah. Wow, well, that's an, that could be an interesting one. Uh, but I guess uh, we will see a flat from DW. Mr. Regis could potentially call two, but then we will probably see a like big squeeze here from Gator. <gasps> oh, Mr. Regis, Let's don't do go. it! <laughs> Let's, go. Let's go! Regis is a. I'm just for the record, guys. Regis is a, like a local legend here. <laughs> he is, he is, and he plays very aggressive, and he would love to show those guys the seven deuce. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so gangster. Oh, is he? Did he just get calling chips? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fake race. The I love it. Race. I thought he was in the race. Now, here comes a squeeze from Gator, it looks like. It does. Gator is not scared by the fake race by Mr. Regis. <laughs> what do you think about that sizing, though? Uh, it's a little small, right? Considering there was a lead from, from, the, from, from the third blind and then two calls. Probably want to go maybe like closer to over a thousand. I think the, the problem with the sizing is that it looks very, very strong. So I guess like in case he would have a draw here, he has, he has like a pretty big incentive of uh, yeah raising bigger and even close to shove. <laughs> so um, yeah, like now he gives like all the potential draws like the correct price for calling. So he gets gets some value. Um, yeah, it's a it's a risky play. So. I would probably size uh, bigger than this. So, DW and Mr. Regis in a tough spot, oh. but they basically both get, yeah, some kind of okayish price to draw for the two pair. DW has even like a backdoor flush draw back and backdoor straight draw. Ah, it's a it's a rough spot. Yeah, it's a good fold. See what Mr. Regis is doing. Because Mr. Regis was the pre-flop aggressor. He was, and like two of the sevens are already blocked. Uh, nice hand by Gator. His tricky play with Kings paid off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't get punished for this. Yeah, that's, that's some. Sometimes you got to be really careful about playing these big pocket pairs because we know a lot of people don't like the full pre-flop. So, obviously Kings is a second best starting hand, but 
multi-way four or five players on a on a board like 10-9 suited even the, even with that deuce on there the deuce generally doesn't make a big difference in some cases unless somebody has a set you're the best Like, you still have to be really careful with how you proceed with pocket kings. Very, very risky play, but paid off this time. Like, the only question is what would have happened when he uh, would three bet against Mr. Regis. So, we know the Nick game is on, so everybody has a pretty high incentive to... Try to get rid of their button. Yeah, right, to four bet or to cold call a three bet. Everybody wants to see a flop, and you anyway don't get much credit in the Nick game when you three bet. So, lots of big incentive to play back. So... Not sure what uh, here Nasty Nate would have done with first pocket sevens. So, yeah, not sure if he uh, got some maximum value there. But, uh, yeah, still a nice pot. Hayden14 in the chat. Nice squeeze by OOC. <laughs> I think he's taking some of that coaching lessons that he got from, from Danny last night. Did you get a chance <laughs> to listen to some of it last night? I, um... I, I just uh, scrolled, uh, scrolled through the stream and watched my hands. Uh, they liked the commentary a lot. Like I t I, here I was, I, was doing, I was playing the round of each game after the stream, and uh, Danny was at the table, and I, I already told him that like, I liked his commentary a lot. It was, it was very nice. He said lots of nice things about my plays. <laughs> Mark Wee in the chat also as well. What's up, Mark? Always good playing with you. So Kimmin made a suggestion about the knit game. Instead of whoever pay, pays it, right, what she was suggesting was whoever loses at the end of the knit game, it actually, they don't pay the bounty to everybody. They make it a splash, splash pot as part of the next hand. That's an interesting dynamic. 100 <laughs> percent, yes. <laughs> What do you think about that? That's kind of interesting. Look at Mr. Regis. Let's go. Mr. Regis also doesn't want, uh, wants to get rid of his nit button. Yeah, let's go, Regis. <laughs> he takes a hand out. Don't forget to flip. Don't forget to flip. Come on, Regis. Show it. There we go. Nice, man, Mr. Regis. Get rid of the nit button. Mr. Reach is putting on a little bit of a show, getting spicy with a seven deuce. I remember the first time I ever played against Regis, he check raised me on the river. <laughs> I was like, this dude's like 100 years old. This guy has no check raise bluffs on the river. He just has like, first time, okay, I didn't know who this guy was. First time I saw him in the room. Well, I've seen him in the room. This is the first time I played with him. At that point in time, no one knew how big of a legend Mr. <laughs> Mr. Regis was. Like, this dude check raised me on the river. Like... What 80 year old guy has check raise, check raise bluffs on there? Like, none. Just, they, they just don't, right? I folded like queens, I think. And it wasn't even that big of a dry board. So I was like, this dude has a set minimum, right? Dude had like ace high. It just like flipped it over, and the whole table was like, oh. I was like, all right. Yeah. And he's taking full advantage about his image. And uh, yeah, if you don't know him, like he is going to bluff you. And uh, yeah, it's great. Like so much fun to play with him. And I think that's also what happened in the hand before where uh, Nasty Nate folded his uh, king queen suited. It's a, t it's a rough spot. So, and uh, yeah, <laughs> Regis uh, gets approved approve of his pocket sevens. Oh, look at this. D-Dub's just going to lead out here. Kim was the pre-flop aggressor in this hand. Yeah, and he leads out for a very small sizing. He basically has no equity. Um, Surprising call by Mr. Regis. Yeah, I, don't, I think uh, Mr. Regis for the surprise can call, like even see a turn and has pretty clean outs for a set value. The only problem is that uh, Kim is behind and she is the open raiser. And uh, yeah, she, she could easy go here for a raise. But with close to no hands, she has a big incentive of raising here because the board is so dry. Oh wow, Gator would have turned a set. Oh, that's why. That's exactly why I would recommend calling here. So Mr. Regis was calling and he has pretty clean set outs, same as Gator. So he just had to pay 150 to win like, I think 1100 or something. So uh, unlucky for Gator. So um, yeah, but Kim is still the best hand. Check to her, she bets, I think. I guess uh, she will take it down. But not with Mr. Regis. 
Uh, Is there just a non-believer here? Does he? Cough. So unless he spikes a nine, I think it's gonna go check check. She bet for value here. It's just check back. You have to be concerned that he called pre-flop, called flop, and called turn. Because he, Mr. Regis, you've seen him play. He could have these weird two-pair combos, right? That's a very nice... Uh, like, the fingers... A little blocker bet. The here. fingers, uh, I would expect uh, Mr. Regis going for lots of check raises on the turn. Like, with his two pairs and sets. So, I like, if I would be Kim, I would think that he has lots of ace-x. So, as a king... Uh, it doesn't bring lots of uh, potential two-pair combinations. Um, so Mr. Regis will never have something like Ace-King, King-10, also pretty unlikely when he calls a flop. So, yeah, very nice value bet. And, uh, yeah, very, very loose call by Mr. Regis here. That was us. I ordered strawberries <laughs> 15 minutes ago. We were trying to, she was trying to figure out who was the strawberries. Oh, yeah. She couldn't find me. <laughs> also, don't forget, if you guys are here in the DFW area, we got a nice little empanada food truck outside of the facilities. DW in the 8th hit his wife. We've had empanadas the past couple weeks at his house. Um... We have a pretty busy room here this evening. 6.30. I think we have eight tables already going. Different varieties. ROE games going. Bomb pots going. Big private games going. A bunch of one-two tables. Rick Alvarado in the chat. What's up, Rick? One of our PLO Thursday players. So this upcoming Thursday, it's going to be round of each. Five, five, ten, uh, four-card PLO, and then five-card Congress. So oh, whoa. I saw you in the lineup, Rick. Talked to J-Ma today. So is it T-A Trong Trong or Ta? So Fuat with the open limb, Danny Isos and Estine goes for the streamer from the cutoff, and Gator wakes up in the blinds with a uh, nice king. So he's going to come in into a four bet. What size is he going to go with? Because they're not super. Okay, they're super deep for a 5'5'10, five, five, but. The thing is, uh, Nasty Nake is not not that deep. And uh, I think the $25 straddle is. Um, yeah, $25 straddle is on, so he plays less than 100 big clients. Right. So I guess I would go for a like, no, cool, cool four bet call. So he's going to fold Ace King here. We yeah. saw him fold ace-king suited against you when you had aces. Yeah, I, I don't agree with folding here. I think uh, yeah, folding is uh, too tight, especially when the nit game is on. So my play here would be uh, forward. So and it's like a forward call against Nasty Nate, but I would size that way that I could potentially fold against the five bet shove from Danny. So Danny, Danny defends. Um, <laughs> guess Nate can go here for a pretty wide seabed, but a shove uh, is, <laughs> is very aggressive. I uh, didn't see that one coming. Um, looks uh, a little bit fishy, so because like which hands really want to shove here in case he has an overpay, he wants to get value. So <laughs> uh, I think he's representing lots of potential flush draws. Danny is even blocking a set and has potential outs uh, yeah, for yeah, getting there against the uh, um, yeah, potential overpair, which is very unlikely. Right. So which hands need lots of protection on the spot would be probably something like ace-jack, queens, but I don't really see that shoving. Right. Um, so Danny has actually a pretty nice bluff catch. The problem is... Because he could even, be doing the hand, he could be doing like with the, with the nit game on. He could be doing like ace, even with ace king, ace queen, right? Whoa, 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 gonna, whoa, whoa. And he like gets a maximum value from Danny, gets it in with eighty percent. Like Danny will be shocked when he sees the pocket nines. Wow, what a play by an estimate. Gonna pick up a nice little pot. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, big surprise for Danny. 
Danny's going to reload and add on more than likely, especially given the table dynamics going on so far. Oh, it is T. Sorry, I'm a ding dong. What's up, T? Rick, when am I going to... You can come... Well, probably not... You're not going to want to commentate ROE this week. But whenever... <laughs> Danny looks like he's ending on about 4k. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep, yeah, don't think Danny's done with this session yet. Yeah, Danny puts on the $50 straddle, still has the knit button. So he added on, I think it said 4K to get into about 5K. So I heard OSC and Danny talking about like OSC, he'll add on pretty much in all circumstances, right? Danny will do it based off, you know, the table dynamics position, all that other kind of stuff. But for for OFC, it matters also a lot. Like, what is his position? I remember the right. stream last week where he was out of position against Brian Green and Seafish and AJ. That was like the shittiest, <laughs> shitty spot where you don't really want to see uh, sit that deep. Yeah. So there you see like that's the spot where you see OFC also sitting with 2K. But yeah. like when OFC has a good seat, uh, like he has like no problem adding on up right. to like 10, 20K. So <laughs> give me your flop and open ender. Backdoor club draw, the only one with a club all over is DW here flopping top pair, 10 kicker. Flop here gonna float with overs. Yeah, that's oh, a very, very loose continue. 10 would be a really bad card here. Nine. Okay, so now Kim does have the best hand. See this? Oh, wait, DW was just gonna rip it here. Wow, wow, wow. Gannit game is on. Let's see if she's going to make the call. I wonder if she's worried about over pairs. And his SPR is pretty low, so I think... So, there was 1,400. Yeah, it's a yeah. tough spot also with uh, Flood behind. Yeah, it's about there's about 1,400 in the pot, so SPR is about like 1.1. 1, 1. 1. And so, like, I think if he bets and then he gets two calls, like, his SPR is going to be really, really low on the river, so... Again, lots of Gator fans. You got the Doe in the chat. Robson. Very interesting play by DW. So, uh, being very aggressive. Turning his 8 into a bluff there. It's like uh, not that easy to get a bluff through against Kim. So, right. So, uh, interesting. <laughs> now, last, last Sunday, a bunch of us hung, hung out at Carlos's house. It was me, you, Danny, Sean. D Dub, Paulo was there. Who else was there? Habib came by for a little bit. Kim, Hayden. Yeah, Kim and Hayden. Gosh, am I missing? Emmy. <laughs> Emmy, yep. <laughs> and so we had a good time last Sorry, So <laughs> I think, like, it's kind of, it's definitely fun to get outside of the poker room. Like, we'll, we'll have fun here in the, in the room at the table on the felt. But, like, just to get outside of the, the room in a more relaxing atmosphere, you know. 100%, with, yes. With, with the moneymaker mojitos. <laughs> How many yeah. of those did you have? I uh, want too much. <laughs> <laughs> but you weren't driving, so it's fine. <laughs> no, like, it was so nice from Carlos. Like, uh, yeah, amazing mojitos, nice barbecue. Yeah. Was cool. And those Wagyu steaks at the end. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, those are the best steaks ever. Yeah, I had never something similar. So, Mr. Regis goes for the call. Was there, was there a straddle somewhere? For 200? Look like quadruple straddle? 25, 50, 100, 200 and so on? I don't know. Oh, that's a DW $200 straddle. He came to play. <laughs> he came to play today. Let's go. That's how I was trying to figure out what's going on. I wonder if Sean looks like he wants to try and squeeze in this spot. Yeah, Sean. And he's going to squeeze with Ace Deuce offsuit. Definitely not scared to play even on the stakes. So, uh, goes for the squeeze. Also, I like his sizing. Guess he has lots of full equity because, yeah, 
lots of these players are not very comfortable or for playing like <laughs> in a 100-200 game or whatever. But uh, yeah, DW came here, <laughs> puts a $200 straddle and it, it didn't do this to full Queen Jack. So now we have a very interesting spot, like with SPR less than one when Mr. Regis is calling. Wow. <laughs> Even Kim said, whoa, what's going on here? Now, do you think Mr. Regis and Fwat are a little uncomfortable at... Uh... I don't think Mr. Regis is uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I, I, I agree. I don't, I, I don't think Mr. Regis really cares. I think he just likes playing. Just to play. Not sure how often he played with a $200 straddle on. <laughs> so, That's true. Well, so now the SPR is won. Like Sean with a very aggressive squeeze pre-flop. So he flops the top pair and now uh, it's very, very tough to get value here. So I would recommend going for a very small sizing like he does. Like to get at least a call from a one pair holding. So when you go too big, you just value on yourself against uh, gotcha. like better ace X. So your hand performs very well as a like check call yeah. or as a very small block back call. So like now I don't really like the shove. So if you think about it, what what is calling you, like it's it's like um, probably something like Ace X, which all beats you, but he, yeah, Sean the genius gets a call by Queen Jack and yeah gets a maximum value, like very loose call by DW here. I do not believe the seven deuce game is on. I think it's just a knit game right now. Oh, see, stacking up here now, up over 7K. In a few hands, once we get to about 20 hands, I'll pull up some stats. Looks like D-Dub's going to reload and add on 4, 6K? I see 7. Of course, Danny is. Danny's always, I, every time I turn around, Danny's getting a massage. <laughs> I don't think he's never not getting a massage. <laughs> Straddles on for the next hand. So I got a lot of people asking about playing this stream. Because they, they think it's 5-5-10. Five, five, but I have to explain to them. They'll start texting me. Hey, I got your number from X. I want to play the Saturday 5-5-10 five, five, stream. I said, hey, let's set up a phone call. Right. Because I need, I, need I need you to understand the expectations and all this stuff, right? And the game's played. Sometimes seven deuces played. The pots get big. It, doesn't, it plays closer to 10 quarter. Right. Yeah, it's like it's more playing like a 2450 in my opinion. Yes, yeah. So like exactly. everybody's putting on the quarter. You see straddles up to 200. Yeah. So like when somebody comes with the expectation, it's a 510. So and maybe I put sometimes a 25 dollar straddle on. That's like not the right game. Right. So you see like stacks are growing quickly. Yeah, Gator yeah. has already like 9k. <laughs> then you also reloaded to 8k. So it's uh, it's a very very big game. Come here, gonna bet out here. Fought here. But the better kicker came with backdoor diamonds as well. Ten of spades. I wonder if she's going to go in the check call mode. Yeah, nice turn for for Ford. He also turns the uh, open ender uh, and tries to get some value. Yeah, yeah, nice little value bet by 60% pot. Also line. nice, uh, yeah, Kim tries to pot control with the check call on the yeah. turn. Um, yeah, against a very aggressive player like, like Fuad, uh, a very good idea. So, and now she has a pure bluff catch. Uh, let's 325, see. I like the size. If she gets away from this, very tough to fold. Yeah. Don't blame her for call calling here. Fuad picking up a nice little pot here. Yeah, with top pair against a player like, if that was a bridge mic, I think Kim gets away. I think Kim gets away from it on the turn. 
Yeah. Even like a DW or a Nate hasn't been playing a ton of hand soap, you know, she may get away. But against a player, again, talk about yeah. Uh, Ford and, her, Ford and her have lots of history. They yeah. played a lot the last weeks. And Ford is definitely capable of having lots of bluffs here. So I don't blame her at all for calling. Here's here's what I like about Regis and Ford's play. I've seen them play on the 1-2. One, on one, I've seen them play 1-3 with a 1k cap. I've seen them play the 2-5 ROE. And I think one of the things that like I like to tell players is like you want to keep your game the same. Like Some, some people, when they move up in stakes, they kind of dial it back a bit because oh I'm playing bigger stakes but would you agree with that if you you know you you, you want to keep the same mentality you like know? it's optimal when you can just like but of course like when you move up in stakes like your confidence level decreases right. decreases decreases so um yeah I notice it a lot like when I play with guys who play to five and then they take a shot at uh, 10 25 they play way different yeah so uh, I think all of those guys, uh, I'm not sure about Ford, uh, because I haven't seen him on the stakes. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident playing this game, so uh, I think they play basically the same they would play on a 2-5. Maybe on 2-5 they would splash yeah. a little bit more around, but uh, yeah, it's a, this, this is a fun lineup. But uh, yeah, of course, like the stakes have, <laughs> have always a huge impact on your... Uh, <laughs> way of playing like when you're not comfortable playing that's always when you move up in stakes in the beginning you yeah lots of guys play tighter or um yeah have have problems like fooling in very big pots so when they already invested in a lot right. so um, yeah that's what you see a lot so pre-flop gator raises in the cutoff gets three bet by d-dub out of the straddle with ace jack also i like the three bet pre-flop because if you're gonna you know if you're gonna play ace jack out of position you want to do like you want to have a raise three bet or fold uh i used to think that hand was really good when i first started off but the more and more i play and the more i learn like it's really crappy <laughs> yeah but he leads out on this board he c bets his entire range on this board gator calls with the queen the interesting thing is that he c bets very big so like you see he is through at it to a 750 so it's like about 1500, 1600 in the pot, and he goes for a 1200 dollar C bet. It's like 75 percent pot. That's pretty big, yeah. That's like on a nine for two sport, like a very big bet, because the um, the question is like, what is your what is your goal with this? Like when you bet that big, you need to fold out like over pairs or like nine x. So your opponent has to start folding something like jacks, tens, nine, ace, nine, nine, ten, or whatever, and. Uh, most people, when they call a three bet and they flop an over pair or, call, or or something else, they call at least one street. Right. So with this sizing, you basically say, yeah, I bet once. So and like with a smaller sizing, you would accomplish like close to the same. So like when your goal is folding out, like some ace x, uh, middling pairs like sixes or sevens or something like that. Like you can already put lots of pressure like with a. 25 to 33 percent bet yeah and then you have like more room for barrel of your opponent on specific turn cards so let's yeah. say the turn is the king you have like potential go for a three a three street play so like getting like right. maybe like in case you really have a hand like getting some more value or still have like some full equity on specific rounds so of course a nine would be like no good card for continuing for uh, on a bluff but now he already invested so much, and uh, yeah, he's in a pretty shitty spot. And yeah. Gator has a pretty easy shove here. Yeah, it's pot size. It's pot size rip. I'd be very surprised to see D Dub call with just ace high. It'd be a very loose and speculative call. Interesting sizing. It's like it's a really polarized jam, right? Don't you, do you think it is like pot size on the turn? Well, no, it's it's pot size, so eight, four seven five. Yeah, like uh, Four, seven, yeah. I think Gator can be here very balanced. So he's probably calling lots of uh, flush draws on the turn, uh, on the flop, uh, which he can now uh, bluff shove. Yeah. Uh, DW's bluff catch is also pretty bad when he has the jack of diamonds, so he's blocking like potential flush draws. Um, yeah, and Gator has like we see like lots of over pairs. Yep. Uh, is also capable. We saw it already that he's capable of trapping kings pre-flop. So maybe then he's pro probably also capable of having aces, kings, uh, right. this range for sure. Queens, jacks, tens, and there are lots of hands that need protection against potential overcards. So uh, 
yeah, pretty pretty standard to, to shove or go at least for that really nice on equity against uh, yeah the ace x uh, overcut holdings by DW. <coughs> yes. When players ask about the stream specifically. I'm like, okay, guys, five five ten. I've seen a lot of five five ten streams at like some other places. You know, big biggest stack maybe five k. Biggest stack maybe five k. <laughs> you may have like a one eight k, but here you're gonna see half the table with more than ten k probably halfway through the stream. I, I, I that's pretty lucky. Yes. Yeah. So like I said, hey. I tell people they're like, well, how much do I need? It? This is this is what I say when people ask, hey, what's the minimum buy-in? This is what I say. That's, I say, well, that's not the right stream for yeah, you. That's exactly what I say. I say, <laughs> hey, if you're asking me what the minimum buy is on a five five ten stream, a you, you haven't watched our streams. <laughs> B, if you're asking what the minimum is, you shouldn't be playing like maybe I'll, I'll play a two five match a stack stream or like a one three one k cap stream, right? Like. You know, when people are like, well, what's the minimum? I'm like, it's not the, it's not, the wrong, it's not wrong, the wrong, wrong question you should be asking me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, they also put themselves in a very uncomfortable yeah. spot. So it's like, it sucks when you are in a situation there on stream where you cannot go away, but you don't really put on the $25 dollar sweater, yeah. but everybody else is doing. So yeah. there's like some pressure on you that you should do it, but you don't right. really want to. And then you see, yeah, the game is playing massive. You're not comfortable. You're playing on stream, so like just racking up your chips and leaving is like no, not really an option. Right. So yeah. Look at this, D Dub. My recommendation would be always like, yeah, checking out some of the streams and see if you would be comfortable playing in a lineup like this. Yeah, there was a guy that wanted to play the five ten quarter stream, and he's played. He's played. Uh, he'll play up two five matches stack, and he's very successful professionally. And he's actually a very good player. And like the one <laughs> the one he watched was the one with Brian Green, Chris Cashbitch. <laughs> like you, uh, uh, you played that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, AJ, what's it called? There was $192,000 on that table <laughs> at the end of the stream. And he's like, I'll, I'll play Saturday stream. Because <laughs> I tell people here, like, I, I, think if you I think if you come with less than 10K for this stream, like it's a mistake. Like you probably need... Yeah, 15k. Would you 15 to 20k maybe even for a 5 5 10 stream? I think so, yes. At minimum, you should be bringing 10 to this stream. At minimum. Because <laughs> this game just plays so much bigger than it. Than it than yeah, it it's like not, not really fair to call it a 5 5 10. Like, yeah. we, you already see, I think lowest stack at the moment is like 4k. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah. We're it's only an hour into the stream. We are just, yeah, we are playing for one hour and uh, stacks are growing quickly. Everybody here is uh, willing to reload in case he busts. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you really need some reload money when you want to play yeah. the stream. Oh, when I when I tell people, like, what's the, what's the, minute, what's the, interesting, just limp here in the cutoff from Fwat with Ace Queen offsuit. Offsuit oh, so is over call. It's a good squeeze yeah. hand here by either D Dub or Bridge Mike. Such a small squeeze. You're gonna to want to squeeze a little bigger than that. At least like, what, 300 probably in that spot. Yeah, I guess. So uh, like that would be probably my sizing. Like you really want to have some full equity here. Yeah. Um. Because once the first person calls, like everybody behind is just gonna call you. Exa that. Exactly. What What's happening when you choose this sizing is, you probably end up in a five-way pot. You are out of position. You have a hand which really needs to hit. So uh, very tough to uh, yeah play the sand out of position and uh, nasty Nate you're gonna bet seven four fifty in the seven fifty yeah no one with spades right yeah I think everybody's just gonna fold around I could see Fwat maybe win okay let's say we saw Flo Fwat float earlier with Queen Queen on overs yeah very spot very strong bet by nasty Nate yeah so when he donks out into five players. Um, yeah, into lots of uncapped ranges on the sport. Uh, yeah. His hand looks already very strong, so uh, I, I I would be surprised when Ford finds he has a float out of out of position. Well, he was in position, but still, uh, like very, it would be way to lose him. Yeah. Opinion. Yeah, Mr. Regis, a very successful attorney. So like he knows Carlos very well. It was really funny. 
Uh, Carlos was playing, when we first started playing, this is before you came back to the States, you were still, I think, in Germany in early January. He, he Carlos started playing the streams and we just recognized him and they recognized each other. And so I want to get, I want to get, <laughs> get these guys on the stream. Maybe next week I'll get you back on, get you back on the fell, get Carlos Regis again on the stream. Yeah, it would be a for sure fun dynamic. Like let them play against each other. Oh, a seek in the three bet here. I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be some calls. I, think, I wonder if Gator's going to come back for the cold four bet against a player like OFC. Yeah, I guess like it's a very nice spot for going for a four bet. Um, in theory, it's okay to mix in some calls, some calls here, yeah. but like OFC is uh, very often so aggressive that uh, yeah, you you miss too much value by not four betting. Yeah, yeah. So he does so come in for the cold four bet. Didn't see what the sizing was. Even so, uh, choose a very big sizing. I think it was uh, uh, twelve hundred fifty dollar sizing. Yeah. So um, out of position, uh, I think it makes sense to go for something like three X. So yeah, like one point. 1,100, 1,200 is yeah. even fine. They were very deep, so yeah, nice play by Gator. I, so what, what do you think about, you know, because he had Ace-King offsuit, so like, four betting there kind of makes sense, because, you know, what if he had Ace-King suited? Would you would you like it better if, with a cold four bet there, or uh, or just flatting? Irrespec uh, irrespective of it being OFC, that was the, the three better. Um, yeah, like, both, both fans perform uh, well as a um, cold four bet, um, yeah, as a flat, I would prefer having something like King Queen suited a yeah. little, little bit more because it's, the playability is a little bit nicer. Yeah. But mixing both into your calling and forwarding range yeah. is for sure fine. Because there, there's some spots in tournament play. If there's like a you know EP or middle position open and you're on the button with like Ace Jack suited or Ace Queen suited, depending on stack depths, it's actually a call like in the cutoff for the button versus like a three bet. Or obviously early in the tournament when you're playing 200 big blinds deep. It's a three bet, but you know once you're like th your stack depth's like 35 big blinds, it's actually a call on the on the cutoff and button because you want to realize those those suited like Broadway cards like ace 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 queen ace jack suited like function really well post flop and have a lot of equity post flop, but you don't want to get blown off your equity, you know pre flop by getting like four bet shoved on kind of thing. So and that's exactly the key in this kind of sports and tournaments. So like it's all about like realizing your equity. And there are like uh, three bet folding ace, ace jack suit to this right. some kind of terrible if that happens to you, so that's why uh, yeah in more modern poker theory there are more yeah they, 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 hands like this perform better as a flat, and uh, yeah. So what's happening here? Kim with the open uh, defend from DW. Gonna um, double barrel on here. Yeah, nice lob for Kim. Goes for Seabird. Uh, DW with the very wide. Uh, uh, call there out of position. Right. Now she does have the ace of spades, so she's blocking nut flushes. This four six seven board though is actually better. For, is it, that's not horrible. It's probably better for for D Dub than it is for Kim. Uh, he has a lot like, like some weird straight straight draw possibilities. Some he has more of the flushes in that spot, more of the sets in that spot. So she does double barrel and gets a fold. Yeah, I, I agree. So like Kim's and would actually perform pretty well as a uh, check. Uh, call. check. Yeah, like check check back in this uh, in the situation. Oh yeah, check back because yeah, D double's out of position. So right. Um, check yeah, check. Especially with the um, <coughs> with the nut flush blocker. But yeah, still nice hand from Kim. Yes, Scott Freeman, that is German money maker in the booth, giving us an expert analysis on these players that he's played against. So, what's up, Scott? You're a very popular figure when you're here in DFW. <laughs> I, w I, w I wouldn't say that. <laughs> no, I get like texts from some of these players, like, like the guys that play like the lower stakes, like me, and like lower to mid stakes. Obviously, you play the higher stakes. They're like, "Oh man, that's, is that money maker?" Like, I think so. I was, what I was, <laughs> what I was telling Kim was it Kim? Yeah, I think like some of these guys, when you and Danny and OFC, Bridge Mike, Kim play that two five round of each, right? Me. Like I play like playing against you because I like the competition, but like a lot of people would be really either either a or intimidated by you guys or be like I want I get to play with Moneymaker and Kim. <laughs> so I've had people like oh, I just want to play play with them because it'd be it, you know you don't really get the opportunity to play with them because you, you guys play like some of the more mid mid to upper stakes. So I like this bet here though by Fwat. Gator's gonna be really deceptive here. Just checks. I didn't see the pre-flop action, so he's just gonna check call. 
OFC here with Backdoor Hearts, Backdoor Broadway Draw. Ooh, ooh. this could be a really dangerous card. Small bet here. Oh, wow, flat here. That's a very interesting hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a very interesting hand. So now Fuad is turning his... I think on the flop he was trying to deny equity against overcards. With the race on the turn he's turning his 8 into a bluff. Um, yeah, OFC now... Uh, yeah, <laughs> very tough spot. Also Gator's lead there into two players looks super strong in my opinion. Um, yeah, Gator has not much to do than, than calling here in my opinion. And let's see what uh, Fuad is doing on the river if he continues with his bluff. It would be a really bad card. Okay, so... Not gonna give up. Never give up. Small sizing? 700? 750? Yeah. Yeah, nice and break. Sean said he had a queen. <laughs> of course, of course. What's the, what's the what's the over under on how many lies Sean sells on this stream? I'll set it at five. You're gonna take the over or under. I, I take the over. <laughs> okay. Let me start counting now. Okay, so twenty can, twenty bucks. Okay, twenty bucks. All right. So you're taking the over on five. That's one. So I'll, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> okay. All right. We are now at hand twenty. That was just hand 21. So let's take a look at stack sizes. Gator up over 11K already. Just about an hour into the stream. Bridge and Mike looks like he added on a little bit here. Danny, Danny saw him lose some hands adding on. Nasty Nate winning some hands early on. Kim doing really well as well. OFC. Uh, so small stack so far about 4K, which is what I'm going to expect here. Yeah, we are playing 510, by the way. <laughs> so I must... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is this is Carlos in the chat. What's up, Carlos? Because he said, "Who does Moneymaker find to be the up-and-coming poker player locally, and is Carlos ridiculously good-looking in person?" <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like Carlos, a ridiculously good-looking person. Yeah, never seen such a beautiful guy. <laughs> <laughs> so who do, you, who do you think is a good young, young and upcomer poker player? Like, obviously, you play with Castro and Harvey Castro and Cash, Chris Cashman. I wouldn't even say those guys are really up and coming. Those guys are really good already. But have you played with anybody at, like, the 2-5 or that, that, that um, you're like, okay, if this guy really puts in the time and the work, like, this guy could be a crusher? Um... Uh, yes, like at the moment there at uh, TCH, there's a um, young Austrian guy. Uh, his name is Daniel. So uh, okay, I've, I think I've heard you mention this guy before. Yeah, like in my opinion, like he's one of the most talented uh, players uh, around, and uh, pretty sure you will see him on high stakes uh, soon. I think it's just a question of time. Gotcha. So how long have you been playing these like bigger stakes? Uh, when I say bigger stakes, anything above two five, so five five ten, because I think you, the big, what's the biggest stakes you played? Uh, 100, 200. 100, 200, Okay, so how long, how comfortable are you playing one hundred two hundred? Um, yeah, I played one hundred two hundred like twice. Okay, so uh, I would I wouldn't say I'm comfortable. So like I I would say I'm very comfortable playing twenty five fifty fifty one hundred. Okay. So but uh, yeah everything above I just had never the chance to play it. So it's not running very regularly. So uh, yeah. So I would say that's like my comf my comfort zone is for sure like twenty five fifty. So I really like playing this fifty one hundred. Uh, yeah. So it's also okay. So what everything which is higher is like uh, right. it's a challenge. All right, now because this is a flip, let's take a look at cumulative winnings. Gator up top, about up 5K. OFC up about 2,700. Kim up herself, 2,200. Nasty Nate, again, making his Poker House live stream debut, up about 1,700. Our two biggest losers, our three biggest losers so far, Mr. Regis down about 2,400. Danny... Not about 3k and D double about 5700. So. Yeah, Danny was uh, uh, yeah lost a big hand against Nate. DW with a rough session up to now. Yeah. Let's hope that he can turn it around. I like I I like that 
D DW's like based off prior stream play, he's been really more loose passive. Today he's been a lot more aggressive. Unfortunately, he's just been picking the wrong spots to be aggressive. Uh, yeah, he was really running running into it. Yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of like um, you know talk about Carlos who's in the chat because he wants to know if Carlos is good looking. Uh, but crazy good looking. Crazy good looking. <laughs> but even Carlos's play, he's like he's picked up the aggression and picked up picked up the play as well. It, well hell, Bridge Mike last week was gangster last week. There was some there was some stuff out of the playbook. Yeah, that we I saw yesterday the cold forward from Carlos. So uh, I didn't see that. Cold forward in the net game. So like really didn't want to lose the net game. So yeah, we see him losing up fair pre flop a lot. So uh, yeah, interesting. Right, so yeah, we're getting a good price to set mine here. It's 800 going to the pot. Nice little flop for Kim here, flopping top pair. What was the preflop action there? Uh, she raised. Uh, was button button limp bridge mic or? Yes. So it was yeah limp. Call, call from Gator. Kim bets. Uh, or, or yeah raises. Call call from both, and then she. Goes for the Seabird, Bridge Mike calls for first gut shot. Oh, look at Bridge Mike picking up the aggression here. Again, these are, th these That's are very, very interesting that Kim decides to trap Bridge Mike there. Kim yeah, putting on lot. <laughs> yeah, I think Kim never lost a nit game in her life. So, so the nit game is basically free money for her. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if they were if they're if they're doing the uh, the splash pot. I don't know if they. It's good to see Kim back on these mid stake streams. I know she, she's missed them, so she was playing some of the low stuff, trying to get some the game back, the confidence back. So doing a good job. Yeah, Kim was uh, Kim was doing very good the last two weeks. Yeah. So confidence is there, and uh, good to see her again on stream. And I, I think. So I've done that before, like when I was playing 2-5 and I had some rough sessions. You know, I dropped back down to 1-2. Because for the for the record, the 1-2 in Dallas does not play like 1-2. Especially <laughs> especially here with the button straddle, the $5 button straddle, it plays like 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes it can play as big as 5-10. Because like, you, you see people with the $5 straddle on, their opening size is like 25-30. So like plays significantly bigger than it actually, um, you know, plays out to be yeah 100 percent let's say let's, i think every stake like where, which is uh, advertised so when you play one two you actually play two five when you play two five you actually play five ten right so that's <laughs> that's that's texas style so yeah, i should just start advertising this game as five ten quarter and then the friday's game is twenty five fifty. that's <laughs> what when i do the but you though. know what's happening when you have this then you basically have a 50 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what's gonna happen <laughs> so i got a, i got a temper expectation <laughs> yeah so here we have uh, Mr. Regis open and Gator with the uh, three way from the small blind. So far, so standard. Also, like a, uh, also a si the, the only thing is the sizing is probably a little bit smaller. I think it was a three hundred dollar open, and he goes for the three x three red out of position. Um, They're so pretty Mr. deep too. Well, Mr. Regis is Mr. Not Regis that deep. is not that deep, so it's an interesting interesting spot. So uh, yeah, now he tries to deny some equity against potential overcards. But don't see Mr. Regis going anywhere on the slop uh, with his gut shot and his uh, overcard. Oh, and it comes in with the raise! <laughs> Putting Gator in a spot. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Gator is super confused. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very bad spot for Gator. So, like, when you think about uh, um, yeah, calling range, like against the three bet there yeah it contains like lots of hands like sevens eights nines tens jacks so he will have all the sets due to connect us like jack ten ten nine eight nine eight seven so he will have lots of two pairs he will have straights he will have sets so and mr regis like <coughs> knows this and knows how to play back against uh, like probably very wide c betting range so gator will have lots of ace kings and shit and uh, yeah, the cars. So we gotta flip. We gotta flip. We gotta flip. Mr. Regis, come on, show it, show it, show oh, it. No, he forgot to show it. Oh, oh.
enjoy the game. Yeah. So let's take the rule off. Then. I think you should. I think you should. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take the rule off where you oh, remind the player. Maybe, maybe, maybe okay, so they're getting rid of that rule. That's fine. But the point is, is that you should be able to remind a new player. So sure. Makes sense. Player. But let's just keep it one like rule. The spirit all. of the game. He wants so to be a new player. You got the hit brother, right? <laughs> you got the hit brother. My first time on the show. You have to show. You have to show. You have to help me out too. Mr. Regis doesn't care. But I, Mr. Regis just doesn't care. No, <laughs> you have to win the game money. <laughs> oh, that is like. Oh. I would assume it's different. I don't give a shit, but I think that rule is bad. We're not trying to turn people off of the game. Maybe, maybe, maybe we don't do it if it's heads up. I'm fine with not doing it if it's heads up because that's not right. You're costing someone money. I would say if it's heads up, then you can't stand. Nah, no problem. Mr. Regis can win a second hand. I want you to be able to give it to turn your nip button. Somebody strongly disagrees with me. No, no, go ahead. Okay, they're just, okay. Mr. Regis gets packed. Yeah, they're just I have zero to say. I don't care. Okay, well, Hunter. We're good. We are good. Oh, Gator clearly doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just a little over an hour into this Saturday 5 5 10 stream here at Poker House Dallas. Nasty Nate here waking up with Kings. Been relatively quiet a little bit, trying to make some, trying to be a little splashy early on, a couple spots. So things getting interesting. Uh, Sean with the <laughs> uh, again with his ace two's uh, offsuit. Oh uh, wow, flop squeeze. Nasty, uh, nasty Nate with slow play, but Sean gets there with uh, an ace two's flop. <laughs> now he decides to slow play, slow play at this time. That's, that's what it makes so tough to play against OFC. Um, yeah, mixing up. Sometimes he goes for the seabird. Sometimes he goes for the trap. Yeah, plays it. <laughs> Plays it very tricky. Oh, he's going to get hit. Nasty Nate the stab. He's going to be stab caller. Let me see here. He does have the ace of diamonds, so he's not worried about flush draw. It's going to be yeah. pretty much a snap call. I don't. There's no sense in raising in this spot, right? Because not much horse is going to call you. This is assuming the cards are red, right? Because he's. Yeah, I don't. I don't see uh, OFC calling. I guess he's considering if he gets value by a race. Um, so now the question is like, what is Nessine checking back on the flop, just calling on the turn, and then bad calling on the river where, uh, that is worse than the ace deuce. Um I guess something like ace king, ace queen probably step already on the flop, which is. Checking back on the flop, calling the turn, and then betting river could contain like lots of hands like king queen, and maybe maybe flush draws. So yeah, I agree with Sean. I think raising here is too ambitious. So uh, yeah, check calling is the best play. Yeah, nice hand, Sean. Yeah, plays every hand perfect. Like before, he gets the maximum value with his ace twos against the queen jack. Now he decides to trap and gets like two streets against the kings. Uh, yeah, incredible this guy. So, yeah, he even said I don't know if you heard him say that he had underwrapped his hand, but maybe he was worried about. It. He said king queen beats him, or yeah, it's like the the question is like when you when you think about the flop and the flop goes check check. So and after that he starts um, here betting, uh, checking the turn, and he gets a bet. Mm, so yeah. it's like it's like he's he's betting small, gets a call, so it looks a lot like a draw. So like gotcha. a gut draw, flush draw, and then it gets there, and he's, he's, he decides to check and gets a big bet. 
So Zangui for the check race is probably too ambitious. So I agree with him there, just calling there. But I still think he gets the absolute maximum on the ace high flop against the Kings there. Getting there like two bats in, uh, that should be the goal. So he got, the, got it, so very nice hand by him. This is the quietest I've ever seen Fwat play. So, I mean, his VPIP's still at 44%, so that's still relatively high. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, had, had, like, not many premiums yet, but played some interesting hands post-flop. Um, <laughs> let's wait until he gets, like, some more uh, interesting hands. Look at this, D-Dub flopping. Jack high flush, Shark Kim flopping top Also with the backdoor straight draw. Yeah. So there are lots of interesting turn cards. I wonder if it's going to be a check check here. You think uh, she's going to continue to bet for I value? Think, yeah, I think uh, especially on a draw board like this, uh, Kim wants to get value. Small uh, bet. I don't really agree with her sizing here. I think she should size up. 60%, so, two-thirds spot. Yeah, something like two-thirds just to get like maximum value from potentially open-enders and flush draws. Um, Indeed, that was going <laughs> <laughs> to... With the with fake bet, yeah. Yeah. Gets a, that's, gets a free showdown for this. <laughs> uh, like the fake betting is going on. <laughs> you don't see that very often. I, you'll see that at like 1 2, sometimes at 2 5. You generally don't see it at these stakes, so. Yeah. Already twice. Mr. We just did it, and now DW. A nine high straight draw. <laughs> yeah. Nice hand, Kim. <laughs> Does it count as a lie? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Bridge Mike here. Alright, he still has his knit button. Yeah, I see him going for a pretty big open. I say 125. Oh, even bigger. 150, 150. 175. 175. Why not? <laughs> Good for it, Regis. Good for it, Gator. I think they're doing a hundred dollar nick game. I think. I think so, yes. Okay. Oh, see of the set mine. Very nice hand against uh, against Bridge Mike's open. If you really want to have a hand that uh, where you get easier way, like in case you don't hit and get maximum value in case you hit. Yeah, I guess on this flop it will be very often checked. Oh, sneak <laughs> check back. Big fold, but Bridge Mike decides to play it tricky. Oh, so now, yeah, Sean tries uh, to deny some equity again. He gets a raise. <laughs> Bets a 100 and then gets immediately snap raised. Yeah, pretty pretty <laughs> sure that uh, Sean gets away from this easy. And Sean already has got rid of his knit button, so... I don't, So here's the thing. Two weeks ago, I would have, you know, Bridge Mike didn't, like have these kind of plays in his in, in his playbook so it's really interesting to see like just the, the how his game how his game has evolved over the past like two or three weeks and just how aggressive more aggressive and more spicy he's been so it's been kind of fun to watch him play the past couple of weeks it's uh, it's interesting that he decides to check back the flop and then on the flush connect he goes for the snap race so it's like actually a pretty bad card for him because Sean, Sean has, has all the flushes. Sean has all the flushes. Sean has like all the nines. He has full frequency, pocket fives. So with this race, he even if Sean has like something like a jack, he has like already a tough call. So and uh, Bridge Mike not even has a spade blocker. So he puts himself into a very tough spot in case OFC decides to play back and goes for goes for a race again. Or even if OFC goes for a call here, he is, uh, I think, already in trouble. So it, I yeah. guess like OFC is even capable of flying down or folding a king here. Uh, it, it was like the top has a jack. Um, yeah, no big fan of the bridge mic play here. Look for Gator here to raise here. Yeah, pretty sure. 
Just gonna call. Just gonna. Just gonna limp the the twenty five dollar straddle. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like Gator fought a lot about this uh, net game and has some interesting strategies. So like first fla uh, here flatting there with the uh, with the kings and now uh, having an open limp limp strategy. Um, He's just gonna fold. Interesting. Yeah, I think Danny went for. Oh, okay, okay. Danny went for the for the nice uh, squeeze there from the from the bottom. <laughs> They're very good. Yeah. Man, keep it simple, guys. <laughs> so, who has the net, net button? Uh, DW has it. Gator has it. Fwat has it. Nate. So, I think four players currently have the net button. Nate, Nate has it too? Yeah. So, Gator's got it. Kim's gonna make it buck twenty five suited <laughs> king. <laughs> Pretty aggressive open from from this early position with yeah. King Four. Suited King you could probably raise it here with the cutoff, maybe even the hijack. But this early on <laughs> in a so in a tur in a tournament like you can open suited kings. Like yeah. Yeah, Kim, Kim and me we have different approaches about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Mr. Regis. Let's go! This is a min three bat from the blinds. Yeah, I, I, guess I think Kim he, is going nowhere and Fwat is going nowhere. I think if I think if he makes it like six hundred, I think they both fold. Yeah, I think so too. Right? I think Regis really wants to play a pot, so he wants to keep the win. <laughs> I think everybody's yeah. gonna fold here. Yeah, that's that's Regis' pot. Pretty sure about that. Well, yeah, big sizing. Nothing Kim can do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fwat also. Let's go, Regis. <laughs> Regis is such a legend. I love Regis. He's the best. Yeah, he, already, he when I played the first time with him, he bluffed me in a like crazy way. <laughs> so I didn't see that at coming I at know. all. <laughs> I was like, it was the greatest like. So there was also okay. There was another lady. This uh, like we were playing in one of the outer rooms on a Wednesday when the before I started the tournament, and she check raised me on the river. I was like, dude, like she's like 70 years old she has no check <laughs> there's, there's no way she has check raise bluffs here ever she shows me ace high like both of these play real three just in this old lady like check raise bluffs me with ace high and i had like over pairs to the board and i'm like I, they have all the sets they have all the two pairs and all you know like so like i just i have to give them credit right because 100 yeah, percent, i agree at one like there's not too many check raise bluffs at one two you may see it more at like these bigger stakes but you don't see too many check raise bluffs at one two so i was like dude i'm like I'm getting crushed right now. Yeah, but that I think that makes poker so interesting. Yeah, like, you have like when you when you play against someone you don't know, like the like you you have like reads on nation and our nationality, age, yeah, uh, gender or whatever. Like every, you 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 have like expectations, but like sometimes you are so wrong and like <laughs> sometimes like an older guy plays super aggressive, yeah, like or like it just does the opposite from what you're expecting. And that, that makes this game like amazing. Uh, yeah, o he, always cool to meet like also guys like Mr. Regis. He has, uh, he has so many like he's he's so funny. Has uh, is joking a lot. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Cool he, to play with him. I, I don't know how old he is, but I, I'm guessing he's at least 75. Whatever. I'm just, I, could, I have I have no idea. I could be wrong, but he's probably in that. Age. But but he he's very he's very sharp. He's very witty. He's fun to have at the table. Hundred percent. Yeah. And he just loves to play poker. He doesn't give a damn if he loses. He's like, okay, I'll just reload for five k. <laughs> like whatever. What? No, you asked this. You want some pizza? <laughs> Everybody, we, we were just told that pizza got here. So. Uh, in a, in a minute. <laughs> Mr. Regis. <laughs> I did Danny here with a nice little hand. So now, now the knit game gets interesting. So huge incentive for DW uh, of what to win a hand. Gator also. Especially in a like <laughs> size game like this, 
Uh, so we still, we, as a like official game is a five five ten. So right. when we play with a uh, hundred dollar nude game, means like you have to pay eight hundred dollars, which is like even in this stack size uh, with this stack size is pretty significant. Right. So uh, yeah, huge incentive and lots of that money for Ford and uh, DW to win a hand. So DW now with a pair and uh, yeah, especially Danny now can take advantage of this and try to get the maximum value. So D Dub, Gator, and Nate still were their knit buttons. Fuat lost us? Uh, no, he still. Oh, so I'm sorry. Fuat, D Dub, Gator, and Nate. There's at least three. I don't know. Maybe Nate got rid of his. Don't see a knit button there. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't look like he's got a knit button. All right. Oh, Rich Mike. Rich Mike, Rich Mike moves. Get, things getting interesting. So Gator wants to lose the snit button. Oh, bad, bad timing, my friend. I like the idea, but it's it's not going to get through with Bridge Mike. What? I think Bridge Mike's going to make the call here. And he he, just, he has to think that with with Gator still having his nit button, that he's going to be making a move. Yeah, I do. I do. Stack size, it'll show you the rest of yeah. Okay. Yeah, like bridge mic is going nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I I understand Gator's idea. So bridge mic is uh, yeah, for sure on the tighter side. So three wetting here with a wide range makes sense. Um, so now things are getting very interesting. Like Gator with the backdoor flush, backdoor straight draw, but Rich Mike is going nowhere. Also knowing that Gator has uh, the knit button. The knit button. So yeah, Rich Mike has nothing to do than calling down here. Let's see if a club comes on the turn. Ten of hearts doesn't change anything on the board yet. Gator's just probably going to check give up here. Don't like the bet here from it, Rich Mike at all. I think checking back here is super important to give Gator the chance, chance to, to give him some rope. With his, uh, yeah, yeah. To give him a little bit of rope. Gator's in a very high pressure situation here with the net game, so he really needs to, yeah, yeah, play the sport very aggressive. So when you check back here, you're in position. There are not many bad cards for you, so giving a chance to bluff here is very important. Bridge Mike is really funny. I've talked to him a couple times. He's got like the, the, the old dry humor. Yeah, very fun. All right, Nasty Knight does not have the knit button. Again, after this hand, I'll pull up the stack size. Oh, see where inter everybody. interesting spot, like especially here with uh, DW behind. Goes for the massive open race. I think we have to straddle 50 on, right? Yeah. <gasps> and DW just rips it. Oh, and we don't we like Nasty Nate is not going to fold here. Yeah, wow, what a spot for Nasty Nate. I just don't see how you can fold in this. I just don't see how you can fold in this spot. I thought it was mine that went to the pot, so that's why I pushed it out there. I mean, I, I don't hate the rip here because it's like he makes it 400. And he's just trying to get rid of his. Considering all the that money in the pot. Yeah. So for him, there's basically $800 stat in the pot. Makes sense playing it aggressive. Ace ten is very aggressive. And that, in term, in terms of. So in my opinion, an estimate has a pretty clear call here, like yeah. against a guy with the net button, huge ah. incentive and in shoving. Don't see him doing this with aces or kings. So just because he would miss too much value here. Yeah. I think Ace-King is a pretty clear card. Oh, it looks like... <laughs> oh, he's showing the cards, he's showing. Oh, that looks like folding. Yeah, you, when somebody does that, it's usually ace fold. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, and nice and like, oh, he knows. He knows he made a mistake. Good job. Now it's down to Fwad and... Gator. Gator. <laughs> yeah. But I'm also like also good that DW is not getting stacked here. He had a rough session up to now. Yeah. So I, I say 
in the past we've seen D Dub taking more like like limp call like just kind of very passive pre flop and post flop. Not so, today. Oh, today he's going for yeah, it. Yeah, he's he's putting the he's putting the foot on the gas today. Yeah, hundred percent. Now even the, even even if the nit game wasn't going on, I you know I think he's just decided to you know. Um, yeah, I think in this especially the sense in nit game had a very yeah. big impact on his decision making. I like Bridge Mike's hand here in the cut in the hijack. Yeah, I should go for sure for an open race here. Uh, so the fifty is on. Okay, what do you prefer? Do you like the three blind game, knowing that the straddle is going to be on, so effectively it's a four blind game, or do you like, you know, the two blind game with the big blind Annie, or like just a two blind game with the, it's going to end up being a straddled a straddled pot? Yeah, in my opinion, a two blind game would be better. Okay, because everybody is anyway straddling. So, and with four blinds, you have the problem that you are way too often out of position, and I think that's pretty bad. Like for yeah, the whole dynamic. So, like, it's always easier to steer when you are in position. So there are right. more situations where you are, um, yeah, able to steer, and uh, yeah, that's why I prefer. I pr I personally prefer a two blind game, like with a straddle, than a three blind game where ev <laughs> anyway everybody is straddling. Yeah. So got the three. We see not the three blind game here. So there's like the 20, 25 was on, the fifty was on. So there's the, the quadruple straddle was on, right? So the two hundred was on earlier by D Dub. Yeah, and the problem is, son, you are, have you have basically you have straddles up to the cutoff or something. Yeah, <laughs> and then you like everybody except button is out of position. Right, except so for, it's yeah. very like it's very tough. Then like the idea of poker is that you want to steal the like the biggest blind. So that's like how all the fury is built. So, but when you are out of position, stealing a blind is tough. So you have to, you have to right. basically in fury you have to steal tight. So in lineups like this, it doesn't matter so much because everybody is anyway. He just they just want to play hands. But if you have like more professional players at the yeah. table, the like overall tendencies will be uh, yeah significantly tighter. Look at this fought. You're gonna turn his sixes and three bet here. Oh, Gator is open. Now we have exactly the dynamic we were waiting for. <laughs> so Fuad is going for it. Um, wants to lose his nit button. Gator has a very, very big incentive to defend here because of all the dead money. Let's see if Mr. Regis is doing this job for him to defend. I think. Yeah, Mr. Regis defends. So, and now <laughs> for Gator in the spot are basically $800 more <laughs> because he would need to pay the net game, uh, yeah, the, the um, anties for the net game in case he's not winning the hand. So the pot is significantly bigger for him, but I understand his full 100%. So now he has to pray that Mr. Regis is winning the hand for him. <laughs> you have to be, so that's the thing, you, you have to quote unquote balance between like potentially punting with the net game. This is a very good flop for Flot. Very good flop, yeah. Shoving it, uh, Mr. Regis cannot call. So uh, Gator loses the net game. He's getting the money ready, see? <laughs> I mean, Gator's still gonna be up couple thousand bucks irrespective of Gator's still up though he's still up a thousand or so give or take yeah I think he's up massive right oh uh it says he's up a thousand uh I, th I thought he was up a little more than that he lost the pot I think he must have lost a pot earlier earlier so oh, I messed up. again he's still up a thousand so I it, it also helps, like when you're up, so it, it, it can reduce the sting a little bit of losing the nit game. So I think they're doing it on every on every dealer change. Joey Pigtails in the chat. He's a he's a poker vlogger. He's a relatively new poker. A lot of his stuff is PLO. Oh, okay. out of out of Florida. What's up, Joey? Nice to see. You. Coconut nice, Coconut nice to see Creek, you right? Chat. Oh shit! RV Phil's in the chat. <laughs> What's up, Phil? <laughs> RB Phil in the chat. I got Money Maker in the booth with Eddie the Asian Sensation. <laughs> Phil, are you are you in um are you in the Choctaw right now? So what's going on here? Mr. Uh, Reed just has the uh, Ace Ten open. Oh, D Dub Queens. Coming oh. for the squeeze. 
Yeah. Again, very, very small sizing. He needs to make it what, like 700 there in this spot? Um, one twenty five. Yeah, it's it should be like at least like 750 or something like that, right? Yeah, something like this. So I, I, you, you, you really want to fold out some hands. And yeah. You don't want to play the sand. And you want, you want to go heads up, really. That's your goal, or you want to take it down. So you are, um, yeah. They're from the straddle. You play out of position. Look at this. Regis here flopping the nut flush, draw, king high board, pretty scary. Off C with a flush draw. Oh, like that's an action flop. Oh yeah, this is gonna be. So Mr. Regis is going nowhere. Also known for playing draws aggressive. Uh, Off C also going nowhere. Yeah. D Dub currently with the best hand. Oh, that's that's a very in interesting hand when Mr. Regis decides to race here. Is he, just gra is he grabbing Kong chips? Or gra no, no fake race this time. Race, let's go. Big let's, pot. Let's <laughs> go, Regis. What a gangster. What a gangster move. <coughs> so, off C also with the flush draw. Yeah, and I think he can't like his, his flush draw here. It's not a great flush draw. Very, very tough spot. Yeah, nice well, fold by Sean. Very, very nice fold. Like calling here, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it would be, it would be a mistake in my opinion. DW can have also like something like Kings where you're already dead. Yeah. He can run against the, like, like he does against the better flush draw. Of course, it always sucks to fold out like so much equity. But uh, yeah, very nice fold. And now DW is in a very, very tough spot. Right. He knows Mr. Regis is capable of um, yeah, playing draws aggressive. But the problem is even if Mr. Regis has a draw, he has like 40% equity against his queens. Like, yeah. And uh, yeah, Mr. Regis have, can have like lots of 8x potential kings. Um, yeah, something like ace, king, king, queen possible. He has a pretty nice king queen blocker because he has like the two other suits uh, yeah. then on the board. Um, tough spot, very very tough spot. And I like to play by Mr. Regis here. Makes a call. Right. But uh, Pot doesn't, size pet. Pot. doesn't look very happy with this. Yeah. King. It's actually a really bad bad card for Mr. Regis. Very bad card for Mr. Regis, correct? Um. Good card for DW. Oh, he's shipping it! But Mr. Regis doesn't care. Oh, is it a I, ship? I couldn't tell he got he was getting it ready. <laughs> no way. Oh. What's, what's, what's happening there? Oh, he did the fake the the, the fake sho the fake shove and now he's just grabbing call raising chips. Now with, with a second king coming out reduces the likelihood of Mr. Regis having the king here. So what do you think about shoving here versus, I mean, it's a strong line if you, with the razor and if he shoves it, he's just going to check back, maybe try, try to realize some equity. Seven of cards. I mean, he's, he's got two pair with ace kicker. What do you think about D-Dub's lead here on the river? Yeah, I, I don't like the lead at all. I think we, at the moment, like, as played, we have a uh, clear bluff catch. So, and when we bat, <laughs> there will be never uh, worse hands that calls us. Yeah, and D was going to take this hand down here. Nice hand, DW. I think if Mr. Regis like rips it there on the river on the turn, I think D would actually fold. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> okay, RV uh, moneymaker. RV Phil says that moneymaker sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, I, I would say I appreciate that. I'll be fully can say whatever he wants. This guy is a pure legend. <laughs> Phil, are you gonna be are you gonna be in Choctaw next week? Got 77 viewers. I, we're gonna pick up about another 30, 40 viewers in the chat very soon. Turned out to be a really fun, fun stream. <laughs> yes, <it did. laughs> already lots of big pots, uh, interesting dynamics, and uh, yeah. 
and the stacks are increasing. So yeah, we, the, like big potential of playing here, like a 15 to 20k pot. Yeah, there's like. At the moment, uh, like sixty k at the table, seventy k. Yeah, OFC and uh, Texas Cam is a big winners. Yep, we'll pull those up here in just a second. Yeah, and uh, yeah, OFC plays very well tonight. Um, <laughs> like, it's always interesting how he mixes up his decisions. Like, basically, same spot where he where he squeezes for the ace twos. One time he slow plays, perfect timing against the kings. Then he fast plays, gets some maximum value against the queen jack. And this guy, this guy is good. This guy is so talented. Very interesting. Oh, see? Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny because he never plays any two cards. Or he, like his lines are so unpredictable. No. Like he does. <laughs> like I don't ever think I've seen him play the same line twice. That's right? that. That makes it tough to commentate on this guy. Yeah. So you're always guessing what is this guy doing now, and then like playing against him makes it even tougher. Yeah. <laughs> So that, okay, if you're going to be in WPT 5-4, are you available next week to play, Phil? That's how I'm, I'm that's basically the bottom question, the line, the question I'm asking. So, Bridge Mike here. Just a check call, so second pair. Let's see if Danny wants to go for it. Sides against it. Uh, Rivers, Rivers showdown value. value. Yeah. Not a ton we'll of showdown check, check. value. I mean, he's beating ace highs. Yeah, all potential straight draws. So yeah, hey, Hayden in the chat saying, oh, he never plays any hand the same, and he's a poker magician. I agree with that 100%. Yep, I agree with us too, Hayden. So nice to see you in the chat too, and greetings to Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we gotta show this real quick. We put this together. Well, not only is OFC a cash crusher, he is now a tournament crusher. So yesterday after the booth, he he comment, he, he played for a little bit. Uh, he won the tournament last night. He jumped in for a hundred bucks just for fun, and he ends up winning this tournament last night. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was playing uh, out of the stream a little bit. One of each came out. And I saw him playing heads up there with TW in the hundred dollar tournament. Yeah. Crazy this guy. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm just trying to get that over. Uh, I, I promise, if anything of substance happens on this hand that's going on right now, I will switch it back. Right now, nothing is going on. So, all right, we are all in. We got the nothing, okay. Oh uh, wait, DW the tens. Uh, DW's got a gut shot straight on the bottom. Right, we we'll go back to blinds defend. King high board. Nobody has a king. Um, Dub still with the bad hand pocket tens. DW leads out with a small sizing. Yeah, super small sizing quarter pot. Well. I don't hate that sizing out of position in a multi-way pot. It has, it's a problem with leading out with... Um, oh, there it goes. Let's go, Regis! <laughs> I love this. I love this guy. <laughs> Nobody cares about it. He's <laughs> open race. No, it's, it goes dunk and re-race. <laughs> God, Mr. Regis is such a gangster. He hit... Again, for... Next bluff. Crazy. From, from an older player... He has such. He still has a pretty good feel for the game. He does hundred percent. He's playing lots of poker. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, there. I used to think like he was like. I say fish. That's such a bad word. But like just like just play, just to play, and like, I still won't remember. I still forget. Like this dude check raised me on the river. Like this dude's eighty years old. This guy has zero bluffs, zero, and he just <laughs> flips over ace high. And I was like, oh my, I like queens or something like that or whatever. I don't remember. Yeah. And it wasn't like I said, it wasn't even like a super coordinated connected board. It wasn't like no flushes hit, no straights hit, but like it's it, it was a relatively dry board. So like this guy has sets. Like he's just like he's got a set here. Like this guy comes to play, so that's <laughs> like uh, showing showing a bluff for him. It's like not not because of some money, in my opinion. It's just like because he wants to show you. Yeah, that he can beat you. <laughs> like I said, he's a poker house legend. Everybody loves him here. Yeah. Right. It's so much fun to play with this guy, even if it's not that easy. <laughs> it's always tougher to play against aggressive players than against passive players. Yeah. And he puts you in sports for sure. Four hand into this flop. Nah. Mr. Reach is here. Flopping uh, Queen High Flush Draw. And he's going to bet multi way. Yeah, that's a, this is a very dynamic board. So it's a good for, it's good for his like 
third blind calling range. It actually hits him a little bit better. I didn't see the preflop action. I was looking at the chat. Correct. It's correct. The problem is like on like when the board is like that dynamic. So where lots of potential cards can change the nuts on the board. Right. So here, like let's say the turn is a seven. So then like a difference rate is the nuts. The turn could right. be real hard. The turn could pair the board. So like nuts change very fast and then boards like this the in position players have lots of adv advantages because they can control the port they can dictate like uh, sizings on, on on the turn on the river so that's why the out of position players in theory want to control the port so right. do lots of checking even if they hit the board a lot so and in a multi-way spot here it's a very good board for the button cutoff yeah okay. very good point Okay, so Carlos said that $500 donation to the stream if someone felt OFC. Um, Emmy says, what's up to us? What's up, Emmy? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> OFC smells like a beast. That's what Carlos says. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Hayden says that Mr. Regis always has a range advantage. I would agree with that. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Mr. Regis always has a range advantage. <laughs> I don't even think he understands. I don't even think he knows what... I don't even think he knows what range advantage means. Like he's such an old school type player. I don't know if he, it would be interesting to ask him. Yeah. So what do you think, Mr. Regis? You have the range advantage. Well, so here's the thing. I, I, I showed you that little picture of when he had when he was eating an ice cream cone. And I, like, yeah. When he had trips, I was like, hey, Mr. I was like, Mr. Regis, you know, you know, you're an OG, right? He's like, he doesn't even know what OG means. I was like, it means original. It means it means original gangster. He's like, that's awesome. He's like, that's cool. <laughs> so, Brian, Brian Green explained that to me. He's like, oh, I'm an I'm an OG. He's like, you so original gangster. <laughs> you're said, from, okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> You're from Germany, so you're not even American. So like, no, you Brian, get... Brian Green is OG, yeah, not me. <laughs> no, I'm saying yeah, Bri Bri Brian Green is old, yeah. old, old school, old school, school. 100. <laughs> percent Green is saying, I love to watch. I think everybody loves to watch Mr. Regis. Yes. I told Mr. Regis we would do like a two-five match a stack stream just for him, and he can put the lineup together however he wants it to be. Just, <laughs> just for Mr. Regis. Yeah, as long as he puts me in, I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna call with a jack six two out of the small blind. Let's go, Regis. <laughs> Hayden's favorite hand, ace nine offsuit from the third blind. He goes set, six ways to the flop. Yeah. Okay, so nasty Nate. We saw him earlier multi way with like these with this board when he had top parry. He bets, but like you said, this is a really dynamic, kind of like a dynamic board because the nuts can kind of change. Now, this there's not a, you know, two card flush, flush out there. There are some straight draws, but it's not as connected as that one board we were talking about. Exactly, like as more as, as more connected it is, uh, the in position players have more advantages. So this is like connected, but not as crazy as uh, five, six, seven right. uh, with a flush draw. That's like super dynamic. Look at this, Mr. Regis. Turning top pair, picking up the lion's share <laughs> of the equity here. <laughs> nice hand, Mr. Regis. I'm yeah. going to let Mr. Regis pick his lineup, and I'm going to let him pick who he wants to commentate. Let's go, Regis. <laughs> Small little blocker bet, 400 into 1,000, a 40% pot. Yeah, Mr. Regis. Okay, no, no, I'm sorry. Mr. Regis. Is Mr. Nasty Nate. Look oh. at this. Oh. <laughs> two, pair, two pair over two pair. Yeah. Well, it's a one liner. It's a one liner. So I think it's going to go in check call mode. Yeah, I guess Nasty Nate could go for some value. Yeah, and as played. Mr. Regis is going nowhere. He's not going to have a ton of sevens. He may. Have, yeah, Mr. Regis is going to make the call. I, I, I don't see him folding here. He's definitely not coming in for a raise, but he's definitely. I don't think he's folding in this spot. No. Oh, that's a hidden two pair. Bit or two pair. Yeah, Ooh. everybody's like, let's go, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Regis, the OG in seat one. Let's pull up some of his stats here. Yeah, Mr. Regis spinning it up to 8.3K. Yeah, let's oh. go. Oh. <laughs> All right. And OFC, the two, and Kim, Texas, the two biggest winners so far. Gator up still a pinch. Bridge Mike down uh, up a little bit. Fwat and Mr. Regis down a little bit, not too much. Uh, Nasty Nate, Danny Marks, and D Dub was down a quite a bit earlier. Time he, to turn around. he recovered already yeah. like 3k or like minimum two. So, and uh, yeah, OFC with a very strong session, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Kim also with a nice session, and uh, yeah, Mr. Regis also close to break even again. Uh, yeah, interesting, interesting. 
Still lots of poker about halfway through the stream. This is why I like streams like this, because like a fun stream like this, a lot of action, uh, the stream goes by relatively quickly. Yeah, 100%. Like, especially in a lineup like this. Yeah. Mr. Regis is not folding this on the button. I don't see that. <laughs> he's, never, he's never folding this on the button. <laughs> Good fold by Kim. <laughs> I, what, I don't know what she had. I didn't Jack see. six off. Okay. Jack. <laughs> so, but it's, uh, it looks like a nice hand for Sean squeeze. to go for a squeeze. Yep. Suited wheel ace. Really good candidates in cash and turn. Also nice squeeze. sizing. Uh, yeah, will deny lots of equity already. Puts everybody in tough spot with this. Uh, with this ace four, plays good uh, on lots of boards. And he's already blocking like uh, top range of opponents. Yeah. So even if somebody caught now with a pocket pair, he will always have his, I don't know, like 30% equity. And uh, yeah, also the free flop raiser advantage. So we'll play it uh, pretty likely profitable on most boards. Nice hand, OFC. And with Danny and OFC were talking about yesterday, you know, Danny's more of the quote-unquote studied theoretical base type player. All right, let's take a look at these VPIP percentages right now so far. D-Dub up top! And we see like a small sensation. OFC just number four in VPIPs. Oh, what's what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> this has to change. This will change. Yeah. D-Dub. I did, like I said, it doesn't surprise me that Mr. Regis is in the top three. So that's not surprising. Oh, is he at only 42? I say only 42%. Usually he's in like the 60s. Yeah, right? he's, he's, not, he's locking it up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so. <laughs> there's no there's no big like winners or, yet. No big winners or losers yet so far in the stream. Again, halfway through this stream. But super fun stream. The dub here just gonna limp the fifty dollar straddle. The double straddle is on this hand. D dub gonna call the fifty here with King Jack off suit. All right, Massey Nate just gonna check his option here. Gonna go three ways. D dub flopping the best of it. OSC leading out on the flop with his gutter. And no one hits gutters better than him. And as stated, no one hits gutters better than, than OC. And right on cue, turns the nuts. And we all know D-Dub is not going anywhere. Oh my gosh, that was perfect timing. Oh, what a bad river card for D-Dub. I would look for OC to potentially overbet pot here. Oh, he's going to check. Oh... Yeah. Yeah, OSC there lost some value by who's hoping that D Dub was gonna actually um bet the river there, knowing that he he put him on a king there and when that third king came up on the river he he checked to him hoping that he was going to, you know, bet his trip queens that he had. D Dub just gonna just check back trip queens. Very, very, very surprising check back there by Dwayne. I like OSC's check there, so he's hoping to get him to like uh, bet his trip kings there. Magneto Hex, what kind of c cigar are you going to smoke? Okay, so I will tell that to the table, Carlos. Eric, I know you're listening right now. Carlos in the chat saying $500 to the stream. And another $500 to the table, whoever felt OSC. Okay, so announce that to the table, Eric. All right, Kim's just going to call on the button. going to try to realize the equity with ace-queen offsuit. Could have potentially three bet here, but it is an early position open from D-Dub. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kim here flopping the Nutter Butters. Flopping Broadway here. D-Dub flopping top two here. Now, neither player with a club. I wonder if Kim's going to come back here. 
Should I try to potentially deny some equity against some spade holdings? It looks like she's getting raising chips. Looks like she's going to make it about 1,000. Is going to come in for the immediate raise here. Going to make the call. Oh, wow. Now, if a spade comes on the, on the turn or river, let's see. What a flop for Kim. Spade does get there. Very scary dynamic board. She's going to check back. Okay. Going to just check back. Try to get the show down. Three diamonds doesn't change anything. I think now, based off that check on the... Based off that... Yeah, I didn't realize how strong... Wow, you missed a potentially big hand. So, DW open plus one with King Jack offsuit. Kim had flatted on the button with Ace Queen offsuit. She flops a Broadway. He flops top two. Uh, bet call, but then the, there was two spades out there. The spade came on the on the turn. Check check, and then a, a brick on the river, and it just goes check check. So. Oh yeah. I think I think if that spade doesn't come on the river, Kim could have maybe eked out a little bit more value. But there was a four line in the Broadway out there, so it made a, it, it probably be tough for her to get some value. So I think she just went into kind of like check call mode kind of thing on the turn. Yeah, it makes sense. So this time, Rich Mike with the hundred dollar open. I think on the twenty five dollar straddle makes it a hundred. Nick Amos on again. I don't think so just yet. Oh, okay. I think at the dealer change. So when 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 Terrell's in the box right now, when Big Brian comes in, uh, the Nick game is going to be back on. Yeah. So open race from Butch Mike. We just calls four calls from the bottom, and DW defense and a straddle. Uh, interesting board. Let's see if Rich Mike decides to go for a seabed here. Lots of competition here. I uh, think checking is fine. And uh, yeah, Ford um, with his gut shot, uh, backdoor flush draw um, will take it down probably. Yeah, nice bet by Ford. Um, yeah, <laughs> with the sand, he actually. Um, Broke even for the night. Very active table so far. Um, I think the lowest VP at the moment is uh, at uh, twenty four percent. Um, yeah, for an, for an action table like this, actually not bad. So let's see how things continue. Regis with the uh, open limb. Danny, pretty nice ISO with the pocket fives. Um, yeah, doesn't mind getting called. Wants to build a port there in position. Makes lots of sense. 
uh, Sean calls from, makes a loose call from the small line. DW, uh, same defense straddles there with the 8 6. Let's go straight away to the, uh, to the flop. Um, very nice uh, flop for DW with the strips. Um, expect to see lots of jacks here to Danny, but I don't see him uh, yeah, betting here into, into uh, three players. But he decides to go for a small bet. I don't think it's uh, it's that bad. He wants to deny some equity, and uh, yeah, Sean goes for the very light floats. They're out of position, and DW continues this trap. So uh, yeah, now not much for Danny to do then. Checking back, trying to hope for a five, which get and gets there. Magical river card for Danny. Terrible card for DW. Um, yeah, guess DW, yeah, like he does, goes for a small bet, and uh, yeah, dream card for Danny with the flush connect on the river, um, short size very big here, yeah, like he does, 1100, I like the sizing, and now DW is in a, yeah, tough spot, makes a snap call, got, uh, got unlucky, <laughs> yeah, no reward for, for the trap there. And got sucked out by Danny. A nice hand, Danny. Yeah, Kim nails it. What a luck box. Yeah, unlucky spot for DW, like Ryan with his trips into uh, Danny's river boat. But yeah, with his, uh, because of his trap there, he uh, <laughs> lost close to the minimum. But yeah, of course, unlucky that Danny got there. Alright, Gator here, pocket eight. Yeah, Ford doesn't like folding, goes for the <laughs> defense there and the hijack. Yeah, Sean is going nowhere on the bottom. Very nice call. Hand plays very well, multi way. Um, what do you think about squeezing there versus just flatting on the button? I think it's uh, very light against uh, an under the gun open from Gator. Okay. Um, I did, yeah, that's right. I didn't see he was under the gun. Yeah, I, 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 would, I think. Uh, Especially in a spot like this, a sand plays uh, very well multi-way, so I prefer the call way over the... Uh, no eights coming out. <laughs> no more eights. They're all the gone. Ace. DW again with the um, small size squeeze out of position. Um, goes for the seabed there on the 9-3 deuce. Um, yeah, Gator already in a pretty tough spot, in my opinion. He has to call minimum one time against DW, who is probably seabetting his range on the sport. But DW gets it through. Nice hand. <laughs> hey, you got about another, what, five weeks here? Five more uh, weeks? Yeah, like exactly one month more. Okay. You're playing every stream until you go back. <laughs> I, I, whenever, whenever you have a seat for me, man, I will play. <laughs> I need. I, I want to do like one, like another one more twenty-five fifty before you leave. Yeah. But Brian Green said he's not going to. He's going to be gone this. He was gone yesterday and then next week because of WPT and then should be back the week after. So. Kim having a really good stream. She's up about 5k. I think she's currently the biggest winner right now yeah. outside of OFC. Playing, she's ahead of OFC. Playing very well. I also, you don't see very often that Kim just has a 31% deeper. Playing very disciplined and yeah, pays off. All right, here's the flip. Bridge mic of the Aces. All right, so on these flips, I like I always like to ask our guest commentator. Like, what was it that made you decide, like, I guess, you know, you, 
like a lot of poker players, you guys, you, you grind the, the, the low stakes just to get like some volume in to like make your mistakes. When was it at that point? What was the point where you're like, okay, I'm ready to move it to two five, and then from two five up? Um, because you you made that decision. You were in Europe, right, before you came over here. So like you, we've talked about European poker. It's it's a lot more nittier. It's a lot more tougher. Uh, yeah. Well, so you were beating the games out there, obviously. So yeah, I was beating the games, but uh, like the biggest games in like my local casino was like a two four. Okay. Uh, which which played not even very big so like yeah, during my university time like i was pretty lucky so i german university works like this so or especially in my uh, i studied business so i had basically three months university and after that i had three months complete free time oh wow it was like for working or whatever and during my free time i went to las vegas always first i, I think the first two trips to las vegas were just for playing one two one three so at some point i had just yeah, enough money for playing two five and I always saw poker like some kind of video game where I always wanted to move up to the next level. I got you. So, and uh, I set like uh, bankroll goals I wanted to reach on 1-2, uh, on 1-3, on 2-5 for moving up to the next level. So, and uh, yeah, I was pretty lucky that I uh, went to Texas pretty early. So yeah. I was here the first time in 221, beginning of the year. So, and uh, yeah, I was running pretty good and could move up like f pretty quickly to 5.10, then to 10.25, and all that. <laughs> and then uh, and it ended that uh, 5100. Nice. So, it, yeah. It's so funny when I go out to like Vegas and when I went to Daytona Beach. Okay, y'all, so the Nick game is back on. Nick came back on. They and are Kim, doing it at the Kim, dealer change. Kim, Kim is going for it. All right. Here, this, this, this sizing from. That's still a small sizing because she was. Yeah. Now everybody's going to end up calling because they're getting priced in. All right. I think, Dan, I think Danny is probably going to be the only one that folds here. Yeah. Dan OFC is going to call. He's not going to fold. Danny, Danny made, it, it's already a pretty marginal call where Danny's there uh, for a middle position with the 10 7 suited. So, but. Uh, yeah, sa same for Kim, but uh, like the price is like way too good for her. So she just has to pay like three hundred to play now, like uh, two thousand, yeah, two thousand yeah, dollars over pot. two over two K pot. So um, yeah, DW should really uh, yeah, like uh, he should have made it like eight hundred thousand. Yeah, he really needs uh, some. Uh, the problem is like. He ended up in the spot now, I think, like three or four times. Oh, he just rips it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. He just yeah. over, over, super over rips it. I like it. Nobody can call. Even even with someone with like Ace-9 or something like that. Wow. Gets rid of the knit button. Yeah, he ended up in the spot, I think now three or four times where he chose the pretty small preflop sizing, then ended up 4 5 way, went for a C -verse. and uh, yeah, super tough to play the spot out of position. And uh, yeah, you avoid this by sizing up, giving your opponent a worse price. So if you would have sized up, yeah, Kim is in a very sp a bad spot, cannot call with his jack 8, and then he probably ends up heads up against ace jack, and uh, yeah can play this hand way easier and uh, yeah <laughs> and can play it better like post flop Yeah, OFC with the loose open from the hijack, ace loose. Maybe also because I told him that he was just number four in VPIPs. So no. you, told, you told him that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, oh shit, now I gotta, I gotta ramp up the aggression. Yeah, that's what he does. That's so funny. Now for those of you that don't know this, so with the straddles being on, the straddles don't count towards the VPIP, so it has to be like non-straddled. Your, your blinds and straddles don't count towards your VPIP. Oh, what, what, a a what a flop by Mr. Regis. Let's go, Regis, with the gutter and the queen eye flush job. But Gator flopping bottom set. Wow. So uh, this can be a really, really nice check by, by OFC. So uh, no need for, for building a pot here. 
so and now we see uh, probably a, a bet? bet by Mr. Regis and a race by Gator. And then a the fold. Oh, he's oh. just gonna check. The fake race again. Uh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a check. Okay, oh, oh, oh. Oh my so god. And they, oh, oh, my god. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <three, laughs> three fake checks is going on. Oh. And quartz, just quartz. Oh yeah, but the problem is no one else has anything. So they're not going to get the... Oh, they, they're... Yeah. Mr. here... Small yeah, Mr. Bet. just loses the absolute minimum here and Gator missed the spot there to build a pot. It's a and big now bet. He goes 600? For, goes for, for the big over bet. <laughs> Nobody can call him. <laughs> I wonder if OC is going to call with the... Okay. No, he no, calls, no. he calls. OC calls with ace high. What? Really? Yeah, it says call 650. <laughs> oh, see, get in. So he, so O's, uh, Gator wins the, a pretty decent sized putt and gets rid of his knit button. So a little bit of redemption from the last knit game. So surprising call, loose call. This super speculative call with just ace high there. He maybe thought he was didn't potentially see, chopping. Didn't see that one coming at yeah. all. He may have thought he was chopping. I think it was like a paired board king. So like ace. Yeah, that's just so. That's a really you don't see you don't see Sean O.C. making those types of of calls often. So he must have thought that uh, Gator was trying to b buy the pot to get rid of his knit button again. Like we talked about this, the knit button can make you do weird stuff. It does. Yeah, good three bet size here. Four X the open from Danny. Yeah, Sean also wants to get rid of the snit button. Danny, nothing Danny can do than folding. So uh, King, ten, King Ten under the gun against plus plus two. Way yeah. To lose. It feels like you know if 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 Danny had opened maybe in the hijack and and he made it out of the OC made it. Let, let, let's say Danny opened from the cutoff and OC raised from the button. Do you see Danny defending there? Not really, because okay. King Ten off is like plays really bad, very, very, really bad, bad. very bad against uh, three betting range. You are like very often dominated by even the bluffs. So like even like something like King Queen, King Jack right. dominates your hand. Ace Ten, so it's uh, plays terrible and it's uh, like no, no very good bluff catcher there. Potentially, it would work uh, like better than as a four bet bluff than a call against the three bet. But uh, even then, like you have way better combinations. They let it be at least tutored. But uh, yeah, a king ten off is just always a fold against uh, three bet there. So Kim of the uh, king jack goes for the overlump. Yeah. What was a pretty clear squeeze? Yeah, DW has a clear call with Ace Ten suited. Um, yeah, let's see if uh, Kim Kim can find the tight fold. Don't see that coming because she gets a pretty nice prize. Going five ways to this flop. Mr. Regis with trips. Oh, I wish, he, the, I, I wish he had a, I, I wish he had an ice cream cone right now. Last time I remember having trips, he had ice cream. He was eating an ice cream cone. So it's a, a flush draw gets <laughs> flush. Snapchat, flush. Snapchat back by Mr. Regis and Kim picks up an open ender. Fuad with the um, jack high flush draw gutter to Broadway. Yeah, DW and. Yeah, what is three just doing now? Continuing. Hey, Kim, slow Kim play. doesn't like her spot. She knows that she had good fold. Very Face good fold by Kim. Because she doesn't have a lot of clean outs. Yeah, she will end up in lots of tricky spots there. Seven. Mr. Regis here. Complete brick. Let's see. Ford can go for the for the bluff here. He has a flash blocker. Yeah, Super small blocker bet. D Dub's probably gonna. Oh. Dude, let me call here. Flushes miss. Interesting that Fort chooses the small sizings as the bluff. Mr. Reed is going to pretty much probably snap call here. 
I guess he can also go for a race. I guess trying to get oh. some, some value. Let's go, Gangster! <laughs> the thing is, he was bluffing earlier. He's actually not bluffing right now, so... <laughs> yeah. The fake raise? The ch the min raise? 800? That's it? With the check? With the, with the, the, with the min, min raise? The min check. <laughs> I love it. This is the greatest. So let's see if Ward really some. Yeah, it's gonna let it. Go. No more SI calls here. <laughs> nice hand regis. Yeah. Double trap, flop, and turn, and then goes for the min click race on the river. All right, Mr. Regis doing really well so far. Oh, let's take a look at these stack sizes real quick. Gator still up. The only player in. Five digits, Danny. So these are the players with the players remaining with the nit button. Danny, Bridge, Mike, Texas, Kim, Fought, and Nasty Nate. Okay, so everybody else has gotten rid of their button. Let's take a look at cumulative winnings. Which is interesting when you see the stack sizes there. Is that the shorter stacks have a pretty big advantage during the nit game because they can just chop. Ship, yeah. So like when you when you're sitting now at this table like Kim with nine K, you yeah, it's just like the risk reward is like not good enough for for shoving. But when you just have uh, like three K, like nasty Nate, so you will, you will, it's way easier to find a spot where you can yeah check shove a flush draw or just rip your ace king pre flop. Right. So uh, just to yeah collect basically the the dead money which uh, includes the snit game. Gator here with King Queen suited. Bridge Mike. Now, if this was if this was a, what do you think about not three betting with King Queen suited here on the button? Um, I know you, it's a hand you can definitely mix, but I guess probably Bridge Mike you may, calling makes sense. That's exactly the, the thing. Like yeah. when you when you face a Bridge Mike open. Um, the question is if you get any value by suiting here with your king queen suited. So what is Bridge Mike doing with something like Queen Jack suited, King Jack suited? So is he really going to call you? Yeah. If he's folding hands like this, your three bird is just uh, yeah, very bad, and uh, yeah, you end up in a tough spot. And now he has like a spot where he uh, four fifty five fifty five, where he where he where he can play the sand in position. And now even you see, like he he doesn't really like the spot with his top pair. Uh, Bridge Mike is betting uh, twice into him, and uh, yeah, he has a pure bluff catcher in the spot. So, falling falling turn, <laughs> pretty tight. But uh, yeah, I guess he has to call a minimum one more speed and yeah. see if uh, Bridge Mike is going for it on the river. But he clearly doesn't like the spot. Yeah, and I don't think I'd like this spot either. No, I, against, I, I against, against Bridge Mike, I don't, I don't I like this spot. So let's see if Bridge Mike is capable for running a big bluff on the river. Uh, so I want to see it. Let's go, Mike. Queen. So that's a yeah. terrible, terrible card. It's I would love to see uh, something like... A deuce, a deuce, deuce river uh, where Bridge Mike, yeah. Bridge Mike is capable of running their 2k bluff to uh, yeah get a gator even from a queen because we could uh, in my opinion uh, gator gave away lots of information there by acting the way he did that he clearly didn't like the bridge mic bats there so and uh, gator again goes for polarizing bat tries to get maximum value by a jack but uh, bridge mic has just a clear fold <laughs> Gator swinging it around again after losing the nip button last go around. Brian in the big bride in the box. <clears throat> Eric Anderson on action tracker. Eddie the Asian sensation in the booth, along with German money maker here, <laughs> giving up his insight. <clears throat> yeah, I was listening. I, like w w when guys like you, Hayden or Danny are in the booth. I, I actually don't, I used to go back and listen to myself just. Not not to like because I want to hear myself. It was like, sometimes when you're in the booth, you like analyze hands incorrectly because you're just like I'm trying to do all this stuff. So I'll go back and listen to see how I can prove. Now I just like go back and listen because like I, I like to hear y'all's analysis because it's so like next level like 
two levels up from where I, I'm currently currently at. So it's just really it's really really neat to like hear you guys analyze things. And this is a board you should see bet often, or you know, you could polarize your bet here, or you know, against this player, you're not going to want a three bet. You're just going to call in position because of X. And it's just it's nice to hear different perspectives. Like all you players played differently, but you, like you, uh, you, Danny and Hayden are very fundamentally sound. Even OFC, he 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 downplays how good he is. Right? We've talked about this a couple car rides. That for for not being a studied player, OFC has a phenomenal feel for the game. 100%. And that if he like if he studied and put work into it, like you know, in terms of study studying more the technical side of things like he would be super freaking dangerous yeah. on the ta on the table i think like um, from all the players i played here in dallas um ofc is probably one of the most talented players so just like this pure talent for the game right so he has like good instincts good feelings of course like he when he would put in like work like in like his fundamentals like his mindset so he has really potential becoming like a, like a top player in the game yeah look at this hand some pocket pairs some suited cards so gator with the open squeeze 600 uh yep i like the squeeze Kim, size Kim here Kim with the flat danny uh, with the small line squeeze yeah nice sizing so far uh dw clear fold yeah and so gator's gonna call in position gator has a pretty clear call do you Both think was a snap call there interesting I think if Kim had 10-8 suited, I think she could call her, but 10-7 just a little too wide. Good fold there. Very good, very good fold by Kim. So like, now let's let's see an interesting flop. Yeah. 1,500 in the pot, hand 55 between Danny and Gator. Wow, look at Gator. Now this is a good board for Danny. He has like all the ace, kings, king, queens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Danny's going here for a range bet. I expect something like 400. 700 looks like half pot. It's pretty big. Yeah, half fold is pretty big on a king nine deuce rainbow. It's gonna but come Gator quick. goes for for the snap race. So I'm with this, uh, he Danny has just an easy fold. What do you think about just ra why do you think about raising there? It's not quite connected. I mean, there's some back door. Obviously, there's always back door equity somewhere. What do you think about just calling there, being in position versus raising, and letting and letting Danny? Because if 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 Gator calls there, which at minimum he's calling, obviously, I think. Danny's gonna check turn depending on what the turn's gonna be, right? With his jacks, yes, but like, no, just imagine Danny would have something like ace queen, ace jack, ace ten. Right. Queen jack. So, which is Danny for sure. Every Like, all of the sense Danny is squeezing from the from the small blind. Right. So, and now you have a jack nine do spot rainbow without a flush draw. So, Danny has like the range advantage. She has like all the ace kings, which right. Gator shouldn't have that much. So um, the thing is, uh, when when Gator is raising there, he is folding out like all of Danny's stuff immediately, right. and he um, yeah tries to maximize the value against Danny's um, king x. The problem is on the king nine deuce, it's super tough to find bluffs. Right. So like which hands uh, he wants to really snap raise bluffs there. Right. Should be probably good something point. like jack ten, jack ten, queen jack. When he really does it. So which I which I doubt a little bit. So I think Danny is even capable of finding hero folds there by King X. Right. And that's why so with a snap race there, he basically folds out all of Danny's bluffs. He I I guess like he maybe gets a call like by King X, but he will get a yeah double barrel minimum or triple barrel right. anyway in position. So I'm no big fan at all of the race there. Yeah. Me, me. The thing is, like, it's such a dry, try, such a dry board for him to raise there on. Like, he's really repping like sets right there, like the set of nines. And then even if Danny has like ace king, he's got to be, he's got to be lyric. Because it was a king nine deuce, king nine deuce rainbow. Yeah, rainbow. So like, you know, he's he's c bet ranger because he has all the ace kings and aces, king queen suited type hands. Yeah, and bluffs. Like and bluffs. Of bluffs. And, and bluffs. And the bluff as a board is like much better for Danny. So Danny and Danny is also known for that he is capable for going for the yep. bluffs, especially on the king high board. So I guess like with big parts of Danny's range, he's going for um, yeah, con a double barrel minimum when like may on uh, depends on the runner for a triple barrel. 
So, um, yeah, taking over the batting lead there in position doesn't make lots of sense. Yeah. First, he has no, he has no bluffs, and uh, yeah, like we like we saw, like Danny just snap folds something like pocket jacks. Yeah. So, and he's he's in a very tough spot when he has king queen ace king. Right. Where he's probably like, I, I guess Danny's calling one street, but when with ace king. So I'm wondering if he's putting him on ace king ace ace, ace king king queen, maybe even aces. Yeah, it's a it's a very tough spot. OSC D dub leads this flop with ace four. So basically bottom pair with a gutter. Gets a call from Bridge Mike with top pair. OSC raises with the Queen High Flush Drive. Gets there on I don't <laughs> I don't see anybody drilling gutters or straights like OSC. He's like the best at it. Like I don't I don't know what it is, but he just gets there every single time on most on most turns in most rivers. I noticed that myself. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you been a recipient of it? <laughs> I think everybody's been a recipient of it somehow. He gets there always, always. <laughs> so and then that's interesting. So DW donks the flop, gets the race, calls, flush gets there, he donks again, and now OC traps him. Three. Small bet. Three fit, like a little blocker bet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not much for OC to do than yeah, putting out a race. Like try to target uh, a straight. Yeah. Like weaker flush. So uh, And yeah. D D dub could have some weird two pair combos out of the big blind. Right. I see something Four, five. Like, like, like 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 fifteen hundred or something, I guess. That's big. That's a very that's a big race, I guess. With the sizing, he's really targeting weaker flushes and a six. Yeah, no way D Dub's gonna make the call here. It's gonna Hollywood and end up folding. OC still doing well himself. Him and Kim. Okay, so Gator between Gator, Kim. Let's look at look at this. We're a little over two and a half hours in. Three biggest winners so far: Gator, Kim, OC. Regis also in the green. Yeah, he's in the green. D Dub, Nasty Nate, Danny down. You know. Nearly 3k plus D dub the biggest loser so far down about 5300 again four players left with the knit button Texas Kim bridge Mike Flott, and Danny very interesting to see uh, that uh, Kim is still in the knit game So I'm pretty sure she never lost the knit game <laughs> Yeah, it's getting close. Oh And I'll see with the three well from the cutoff I I wouldn't be surprised if Kim. Okay, so D Dub's gonna call. Yeah, Rich Mike's gonna fold. Then I guess uh, Kim Kim's gets getting the price. Yeah. Uh, Do you think she's getting the price to call now? It's interesting because the Nick game is still on, so she has like uh, some implies through winning a hand that she doesn't have to pay, uh, pay the Nick game. In theory, it's a fold. It would be too loose to call here, but like. Given that the Nick game is on, I understand her call. Are you calling there? I'd ca I'm probably calling there. Like eight, a suited wheel ace. Like in this in this spot with the Nick game, I think I would I would have called too. Oh, what did what, what would happen if just, this was a ten of hearts? Just just top set for Sean. Yeah. If that was a ten of hearts, oh my gosh, this would have been. Can we gonna call some backdoor equity? Three. Oh, that's that's a bad card. I think he's gonna bet and she's gonna fold now. Yeah, I guess I guess it's a fold now. Oh Kim, oh Kim. Can make the call. Not non believer. That's Six a check a mark for OFC. Just eating his peanuts. <laughs> Come on, tournament champ. Make something happen. Tough decision for Sean. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> are we turns bluffing? around. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, let's make it 
2000. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's loading the gun. <laughs> he's trying to figure out what size. I, yeah. I think he's trying to figure out what what how much is in the pot. Ah, uh, how much do we bet? Nines. Uh, let's, let, let's make it 2000. I wonder if you. I wonder what he's putting around like. Jacks, nines. Just checking, checking back. Interesting. Just offset. What? Surprising check back there by OOC. I think. I mean, Kim could have like ace five suited, but there's not too many. Uh, Kim's not going to have too many five x combos there, and she's only going to be having like the suited five x combos there. Generally speaking, super surprising check back by by by, by OOC there on that river. I mean, if he barrels there, Kim's not calling, but... Yeah, still, I think Kim has enough potential uh, check calls there. JR, I agree. OOC's peanuts are like Regis eating, Regis eating his ice cream cone. I agree. I agree, J. <laughs> What's up, Poker Monkey? J JR was the guy that sent me and Hayden cookies a couple weeks ago when we were in the booth. You were playing that stream, that Saturday stream. All right, so three players. Four players still left. I don't know. I want to pull this up really quickly. I just want to see. It's going to be super quick. Just to see. Okay, Bridge Mike, Danny Marks, Kim, and Fwat. Okay. Just wanted to see who still had the who still had the knit button. Four ways to this flop. Everybody with a very loose speculative calling here. Yeah, D -D -W -W was, uh, not straight. Yeah, I was like, he, he's there. <laughs> yeah, Kim has uh, a gutter. <laughs> has a, <laughs> and, so it's a very nice gutter. Like when, when she gets there. I think Kim's gonna call one street here. Yeah. For uh, not enough backdoor equity gonna fold. Ten would be super interesting. Okay, now she turns some showdown value. Pretty close to pot size bet, 300 to 365. Yeah, I guess she has a pretty cute four now. Oh, is she going for 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 a big bluff? Scott Friedman. Peanuts. Peanuts. Kim's gonna make the call. Two of clubs. I think she's just gonna have to give up here now. The eight from space. Lots of eights out there. Danny adding on another thousand, looks like. Yeah, we're surprised that you checked that set to get uh, OSC. Really surprising check back. Yeah. Didn't see that one coming at all. I wonder what he was potentially putting. Uh, Race to one and a quarter here. So, Fuad with the Queen 9 dominates the Jack 9 of Mr. Regis. Danny defending with the Jack 3 offsuit. Yeah, lots of dead money in the pot. Yeah, lots of dead money. All right, Regis. Barrel. Just going to check here. Yeah, it looks like a pot for Fuad. Yep. Danny going to fold. Regis going to fold. Neither one. Really often that on boards like this, the most aggressive player takes it down. Yeah, especially in the it was it was all the blinds pretty much, right? Yeah. The strat and the straddle, small blind, third blind, and the straddle, right? Something like that. Yeah, something like this. Yes. Yeah, we just lost in the small blind, and uh, yeah, Danny, Danny in the biggest biggest blind, whatever, <laughs> biggest straddle and watch called.
DW with the Kings. It's a good hand. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. I recommend playing though. Yeah. In position or out of position. <laughs> Not that bad. Yeah. Gator with the threes. Yeah, it's getting a decent price to set mine. And the Nick game was also getting serious. Yeah. And it's against a D dub today has been a really aggressive, you know, pre flop, post flop throughout the stream. Something that we haven't typically seen from him in prior streams. Yes, Jay, I saw your question earlier. I'm sorry. In order to get rid of the net button, you have to show your cards when you fold. If you don't, you have to um, keep your net button. So Gator calls a big continuation bet of DW. Uh, I think it's fine. Like we saw DW betting uh, or C betting pretty wide. Um, yeah, but against the double barrel, I guess he has a pretty clear give up. So what do you think about the stream so far? Was it, was it everything you expected it was going to be? A little bit of action, a little... Um, yeah, I, I think uh, DW plays, like we said, like more aggressive than we expected. Sean played uh, like two hands. Uh, interesting. Interesting, like I was not expecting at all. I will, I will talk to him after the stream. It would be interesting to hear what he was thinking in the spot. On that set of hands? Yeah, right. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's a f it's a fun game. Like <laughs> a little bit like expected. Uh, yeah, did a good job of uh, creating this lineup. <laughs> I'm already working on the lineups for next week. So no one, w surprisingly, no one with a queen going six handed. Six handed. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six handed to this flop. No one with a queen. I think it's going to be whoever takes a stab first. Well, it depends what happens on the river turn. Deuce. Danny uh, with, oh no, uh, fought with the best hand. Yeah, fought with the best hand with a pair of threes on this board. Yeah, tough tough to call. Like, Kim has a uh, king eye flush draw. Could uh, think about representing it by going for a race here. Now you got to be really, what do you think about, like, because you have to be really careful, like, especially so multi-way yeah i agree especially when you are not drawing to the nuts yeah so here on the spot like having the ace of diamonds diamonds is like much much better but uh yeah with the king of diamonds she can she can call and uh i like this bet here one of the odds. half 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 size pot bet here by d dub yeah that's super interesting that he decides he wins with ace eight high throw. knows he can't win there takes down the pot all right, double checking. Last play players remaining three down to three. Danny, Bridge, Mike, and Kim. Surprising to see Kim here. Yeah, had also like a uh, couple of uh, bad hands. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's going over V pips. <laughs> Sean's like, how the hell does DW have higher V pip than me? Yeah, challenge accepted. Yeah. He's like, that can't happen. 56, 48, Kim right in the middle. Danny. Gator, Danny, and Mike all in the t mid 20s or so. So, Bridge Mike here. Big raise with 10s. Oh. He's going to get game, big. Game on. Is that a straddle? Straddle is at 50. He goes for 6x. And he's going to take this pot down. All right. So it's going to be down to Danny and... Uh, Danny and Kim. Yeah. Interesting to see what's going on here.
So, Casey, to, to, to answer your question, the answer is yes. For the time being, we've made... So, Casey want to know if we have the same live stream schedule every week. As of now, yes. We've hired some new people from the tournament directing side. We're also training some of our... Um, what's the, our dealers that deal the live stream to run the action tracker because right now it's kind of just Eric and I are doing the production side of things. We'd like to amp up the number of streams a week, maybe move some days around in order to get a little bit better viewership. Uh, Fridays and Saturdays are tough in terms of, you know, matching up against, you know, Hustler, the bike, the lodge. Okay, now we have an interesting hand. Like Danny decides to fight to three red has Jack Tan suited and gets like <laughs> four callers. Kim flops a gut shot. Frody wants to make sure that Danny is not winning the hand because they are heads up in the mid game. And uh, yeah, Fuad. Uh, well, every everybody checks to Fuad on the bottom and he goes for. Uh, um, for a bet with his ace five, uh, has the best hand, and uh, yeah, I could see Kim floating here once with her uh, with her gut shot. I wanna, it'd be so gangster if she like just like raised right here. Yeah, I don't see her raising. I think her forward bet looks already that strong. She's gonna make the. She's gonna float one. Hope to drill it. Uh, bad card. Bad card. Like two pair for 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 what? Yeah, I think it's just now just to give up here. Small bet. Quarter pot. Uh, 435 into 17. Oh. Yeah, but quarter pot. Kim has evil thoughts, I guess. You haven't missed any significant big hands yet. Oh, Kim. Oh, wow. She's just going to float. If she drills this, this would be so disgusting. She misses total brick. Yeah, this is going to be a give up now. Very value heavy size bet on turn and river. I mean, she's going to have to turn her hand. In, she's going to have to turn it into a bluff at this point. She comes in for the check raise on the river. Wow. What is he trying to represent? Get yeah. snap called here. <laughs> yeah, I don't don't like Kim's play here. Like I think like in case she would have a straight earlier, she would have raised turn maybe. Yeah, she's not checking the flops there with a straight and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, going there for for this check call, check call, check race line. Yeah, very fancy. And tough to find uh, forwards there by, by Ford. Especially was betting the flop, I think, into five players. So already very strong range. And after that, uh, triple slag, like very strong play. All right, so now still Kim and Gator. No, so it's Kim and Danny with the knit buttons. Yeah, she would have just given up their... And just potentially paid. She would have saved some money, and you know, instead of having the potential. Now she lost like what two k, lost a, a good portion of her of her profit. Plus, also now potentially in danger of playing paying the knit. But oh, look at this. Yeah, Danny with a hand uh, raises. Oh wow, Nate just calls out of the big boy. Yeah, Bridge Mike also gets a prize. And Mr. Regis goes for the for the back raise. Of course. <laughs> Small back raise though. And Danny's like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm my hand is so strong. Ace Queen suited. And that's now the like big disadvantage of being very deep in a hit game. So you really want to take it down preflop. It's not really possible. So now you have to play like a potentially big pot multiway. Yeah. 
Just for the ghost, record, ghost Rob for, uh, goes for the forward. Yeah, just for the record, Robson, he, the Gator cannot lead the game like like if he's up. I have a rule that if you leave when you're up, unless it's like an emergency or something like that, you don't get invited back to the game. So I don't like people hitting and running on, on the streams. So unless you go felt, I can't make you reload and fire. But if you're up and you just decide to get up and leave for no reason, you're not ever getting invited back to the stream. <laughs> yeah, that makes lots of sense. And that, that, that's not just for Gator. That's for anybody on the, on the stream. I, so I think, I wonder if Nasty Nate's going to go in for the, just a the rip here. Yeah, what? what? And he is. <laughs> At least. Hand uh, 65. Casey, this is the hand you were looking for. Potentially a big <laughs> hand. Yeah. So, and also big sweat for Kim. Because uh, Danny has the last mid button. So, so now she could be not only down... Um, was in a couple K that hand. Oh wow, like, that, that could could be it could be a ten K pot. Mister E just decides if he's good, reaching for chips. Yeah, don't don't give me the fake call. And it's enough. Can't it's, think it's, it out. It's enough for the, the the race size is enough for actually. I mean, you're not gonna want to five bet. No, not yet. Danny's like, what is good the hell is going on? He's like, he does not like his spot. Not at all, no. Goodness. Mr. Reed just made the call. Danny in a very, very tough spot now. And amazing spot for Nasty Nate. Uh, like, uh, Mr. Reed just and Danny are blocking each other's outs. Then he tries to figure it out. Very tough in a multi-way spot like this. First with the cool call, back race. And that's, uh, yeah, play a very, very big part. So on our protected side port by, uh, yeah, Nasty Nate. And Danny and Mr. E just play the main port. Amazing flop for Danny. Danny flops the uh, Gacha Royal Flush Draw. Nasty Nate still ahead, but uh, yeah, Danny with a ton of equity here. Yeah, no incentive for anybody to start building a port. And yeah, Danny binks the turn. Now he should start, uh, yeah, try to get some money in. I guess a uh, small bet, like to. Uh, yeah, get as much money as possible from Mr. Regis here. Uh, see him betting like something like 2k. Yeah. Say it's a little bit under the 2k. Uh, amazing sizing by Danny. Uh, very tough spot by Mr. Regis. The problem is that. Um, yeah, Danny has probably no bluffs here because the uh, side pot is protected. So, um, yeah, guess Mr. Reed just should try to find a fold here. Um, not sure if his gut shot outs are still alive. Um,
Good fold there. Very good fold. For yeah, Nat is going to need the board. Uh, going to need the jacker 10. Doesn't get so. Danny Marks. Danny Marks scoops, scoops a big fold and Kim unfortunately loses uh, in the game. No, it's German moneymaker. Someone asked if it was Patrick Antonio's commentating in the booth. Even it's better. Oh, I don't. I'm not gonna say no. It's it's not Patrick Antonio's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't given any points away. Give me one second. I'll take it. We're trying to square away something real quick. Trying to figure out something. <laughs> That's the second or third life from OFC. Second, right? Yeah, second. <laughs> I, I, you picked the over, right? So we got 20 bucks on it. Yeah, I'm liking my chances now. Less than an hour. No buyouts this time. Hijack limp by Ford of C with the ISO from the from the bottom. DW calls on the big blind and Mr. Regis in the straddle. Monotone, a side board, uh, OFC, uh, yeah, with the um, second, second se pair, pair. Uh, it's a nut flush draw. Yeah, don't see him going anywhere. No, uh, ever. <laughs> and Fuad with the. Uh, with uh, nine high. Nine high, don't lead. Yeah, uh, OFC has nothing to do here in position than calling. Wants to keep as many aces uh, here, um, as many hearts in the hand as possible, try to get there, and he has shown on value. So, easy call. Yeah, he's going to make the raise, going to get Fwat to fold out here. Third lie. So, <laughs> he's catching up. He didn't lie for like two hours. He didn't lie for like two hours. I should have set the line at five and a half or six, but I set it at five and you picked the over, so. Sean, just keep your mouth shut for the next... 55 minutes or so, <laughs> so I can win my $20 bet with Moneymaker. <laughs> yeah, so that was the first time um, Kim has lost the knit game that I'm aware of. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that and I haven't heard this too. Yeah, pretty rough uh, last hour for Kim. And, uh, I think she was like up like close to 5k. Now she's down 1k. Let's see how she can handle this. Oh, I see flopping top and bottom pair here. Which Michael second pair? I don't. I don't think. Oh, she's going for the raise. Just said. Oh, he is though. It's just a dry board. Like if it was a way more connected board. And he's in position too, so he doesn't need to raise just yet, right? Would you agree? I agree. Like especially uh, like this uh, top bottom bottom pair. Like when you have two pairs with the top pair and the bottom pair, they are uh, in theory really often a slow play. So you really want to have them uh, as a like protection for your ranges. But yeah, Sean is also a way different style than me. 
so he gets paid off way more way lighter than I do. So I'm I'm playing like way more close to um, optimal. Yeah, but he he has like his own style, so plays way more aggressive, finds bluff in spots where most players uh, don't have bluffs. So even going, he, he's like capable for going even with hands for thinner value, or like then even with his nut hands getting more value with them. So uh, yeah, makes sense that he plays uh, plays them aggressive too. But yeah, for this he's like not that protected in some other spots. Yeah. On that board, Ace-9-3, Badoogie board, the top and bottom pair. Don't need a ton of protection, but there's some potential counterfeit outs too, so, I mean, potential. Oh, this is a board that can get Mr. Regis in a ton of trouble. Yeah, a tough spot. I think he's gonna bleed out here. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, but on this kind of board, I don't see OFC calling. I see him going for a race here, especially when going for what calls. When for calls. Yeah, yeah. not value time, and tr he will probably go for 1100, 1200. I guess something like this. Between a thousand, twelve hundred. All right, goes 1,200, a little, little, little on the bigger side. And I like the, I, at least for me, I like the sizing here because Mr. Regis and Fouat will call lighter than some of these other players. If it's like a bridge mic, he could maybe go a little smaller, right? Or even a DW. Yeah, it's like very unlikely that you will have a spot like this against uh, bridge mic. Right. Because bridge mic is probably never leading this kind of play. Right. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Regis also already lost the big pot before, so now he has the top pair with the backdoor straight, backdoor flush draw. So don't really see him folding here, especially not against OFC. Mr. Regis can think he's up against like Ace King. He's gonna make the call here. Yeah, no. Bot's definitely, Bot's definitely folding now. Yeah. Yeah. Jack would be a really bad turn card for OFC. Diamonds are lots of, lots yeah. of bad turn cards for OFC. And now let's see. Oh, with the, with the fake, with the fake bet again. Let's see if he's gonna try to potentially maybe deny some. He just checks back here. Mr. Regis. Pink and OFC knows that's a really that's a, such a horrible run out. Yeah, that's a terrible run out for OFC. Yeah. I think uh Mr. Regis has also like a pretty clear check here. So he has he has a bluff catcher, so OFC can also easily have something like Ace King with a or ace king, ace queen, something with a um, like with a random diamond. Um, yeah, very very tough spot for Sean. And yeah. Good discipline for it. Dougie, Doug, Dougie, Doug said that Mr. Regis was going to lose his life savings. <laughs> Mr. Regis is probably one of the most successful attorneys in, in the DFW area. He's yeah. f He's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he's, <Dougie. laughs> he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Bad run out for OFC there. I agree. Mark Wee says that Mr. Regis is a national treasure. He needs to be protected at all costs. 100%. And Mr. Re Mr. Regis, again, surprisingly, no one was significantly down right now. I mean, D Dub's down about 4K, but earlier he was down like 6K. So he's kind of swung it a little bit today. Well, Nasty Nate just busted, right? Yeah, and Nasty Nate just busted, but I think he was only in for like 5K. 4 or 5K? Yeah. Oh, 
We're going five ways to this pot, to this flop. Excuse me. Everybody with a everybody with board coverage. <laughs> so, flop here. Bottom set. Gator here with middle pair backdoor nut flush draw. Bridge double blocking Broadway. OFC with a gutter. I think the only one that's going to fold here is Kim. I think Gator's going to make the call. Okay, Gator actually makes a very disciplined fold. Kim's folding as well. Okay, now. Who had Ace Jack of Clubs last, just a second ago? Gator. Okay. Oh. And he would have too bad. I mean, he actually could have lost a lot of money on this. Yes. And so good full. And Fwat using really small sizings. What was that like six fifty? I think so. Yes. Six eighty five. Just half half pot. Snap full from OOC. It's not that hard to get 100,000 points, Dougie. All right, so I think we're going to be good in the nip, nip game button. The last, I'm going to find out about you. I know, I think the only person that would maybe have a problem with it, maybe Gator. I don't know. Mr. Reed just doesn't care. I'm checking. <coughs> I didn't realize he'd busted. So right now we're eight handed right now. Oh, they forgot to bust him out of poker Atlas. Oh, shit. RV Phil. Yeah, well, hold on. It's supposed to be... Yes, technically, but Money Maker is supposed to fill it, but I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. But I know there's, I know this, I know the seat's going to open up post-stream. I think a couple people will end up leaving. Bridge Mike usually always leaves post stream. And 70 going into the last hour of the stream. Doug, Dougie didn't know that. I just commentate, baby. That's all I do. And they're in production. And somebody, bitch, bike. With the stork.
y'all want me in, you asshole? Okay, so I was just informed. Okay, so the seven seat busted. So Moneymaker, yes, he was in the booth and he was commentating on these players. We did check with the table. They were fine with it. They've all played with each other in the past before, so it's not like he has super insight information other than just today's play. So they have agreed to let him play the stream. You guys are stuck with me for the next 50 minutes. 80, the Asian sensation. So, Max, just for the record, we're a new stream. We've only been streaming for about five months. It's, that stuff is currently not in the budget. We are upgrading a bunch of stuff as we speak in steps. So, we are going to be getting... Um, <coughs> building out a new booth for us. Then there's going to be new cameras, and it's going to be mics. So... Okay, we're just a single card club room here in the DFW area. Growing the chat, growing the live stream internally. So, all that stuff is in the works. Oh, sorry, I'll give points out of the way. Remind me in like five minutes. Now I'm in, I'm in the booth solo now. So, Moneymaker is going to be joining the table. Be joining the table. I'm in the booth now alone. Y'all are going to get my mini expert analysis for the last 45 minutes to an hour of this live stream. Again, Saturday, 5 5 10, match the stack here at Poker House, Dallas Poker House Live. Game playing a lot bigger than originally anticipated. Got three players over 10K, two players over 10K. How do the players have so much money, Doug? It's a match the stack, baby, in Texas. So let's take a look at stack sizes real quick. This is a really big game. You should have seen the... I mean, yeah, just for the record, Dougie, last Friday... <laughs> last Friday, on a 5-10 quarter game, I had $193,000 at the table. Super gross. All right, the knit game is back on... Gator here on the button, gonna make it 200. Ace King suited, Reed just with Ace Six suited himself. Suit Gapper cars flat out of the big blind, Ace Ten off suit. We're gonna go three ways to this flop, but about 650 in it. Mr. Reed just flopping top pair. Not a really good board for Gator's raising rage. It's gonna check back here. He knows that this board is not good for him. Yeah, this this board's way better for flat than it is these other players. So I think he recognizes that. It's going to be really small. I don't see Mr. Regis going anywhere yet. Oh, he's coming in with a raise. Gangster Regis. Let's go. We're going to be a fold from Gator more than likely in Fwat. Going to fold as well. He's such a gangster. I love Mr. Regis. He's my favorite. <laughs> All right, Mr. Regis, they're getting rid of the nip button. Water 
Interesting dynamics here at the table. Maritime law, baby. Maritime law. Look at this. Both Danny and OFC with Ace Queen. OFC with the suited variety. Oh. Big three bet squeeze here from Danny out of the big blind. After an open, he's going to make the call. Yeah, Kim's going to fold here. She's thinking about making a move here. Oh, she's coming in with a cold four bet with ace four off suit. And Danny cannot like this, neither can OFC. What a great move by Kimmer being super aggressive. She doesn't want to have to play the knit button. he's going to do here. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I totally missed that hand because I had to step outside for a half a second. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Hayden. I was like, someone knocked at the door and they had a question about something. I had to like, oh, I was like, this is the worst timing ever. <laughs> so I was like, Mr. Regis ain't going nowhere on this flop. Flop in the nut flush draw. Flop with a bottom pair backdoor diamond. Big bet. Oh, no. Sorry. Bet by Fwat in the raise. It's going to have to at least be 1500, 1400. I love the way Mr. Regis has been playing all day. I totally missed that hand. I was so sad. Literally, as the hand was unfolding, I got a knock on the door, and I actually had to step out. I was like, I'm so sad. 
Mr. Regis turning open Ender now. Same thing with Fwat, but has the dummy and well, he's got a gutter. Excuse me. Nice move by Kim. Apparently, she got that hint through with the OC having ace queen suit and she had ace four offsuit on the button. We have about 30, I'm sorry, we got 45 minutes, 30 minutes left in live play, 45 minutes left here in the booth. Going to be shutting this down here, flying solo on the stream. Moneymaker is now in the lineup. He was my first alternate. All the players agreed and knew that he was first alternate. Even though he's been commentating, so I don't want anybody to think, oh, that's not fair. He's been in the booth commentating. They all knew that coming in, and they all agreed to it. And everybody was fine with it. And Fwad just, I mean, if that's a seven of diamonds, I, he's definitely calling, right? Mr. Regis, now above 10K. Three players now up over that benchmark. Let's take a look at these stack sizes. Five players remaining with the knit button. Gator, Bridge Mike, OFC, D-Dub, Fwat. These players hanging tight so far. All right, D-Dub still up top with the V-Pip game, OFC as well, catching up. Gator, Danny, and Bridge all under 30%. Let's take a look at these cumulative winnings. About three-quarter of the way through. Gator up 3,300. Danny up 2,900. OFC up about 2,800 as well. Kim was up about five, four, five K. Break even now. Still in a good spot. Lost a knit game last time. Tried to get a bluff through. So I think like just in that one hand, she lost like three K in that hand between bluffing and the knit game. So Interesting board here for everybody. Oh, see here. Got him. Does have the flush. It is a paired board, though. Not too many potentials full house out there. Bridge Mike does turn two pair. No one with a four. Oh, see with a redraw to the straight flush draw. Already has the flush. Eight eye flush. King of Hearts brick on this board specifically. Trying to target two pairs or or, or you know four X, four X combo, four X hands like Ace Four. Yeah, so they were confirming, so that's what I was saying. We all asked the table, everybody was fine with it. Moneymaker. Moneymaker, we took a vote. Moneymaker. Chris. We have checked. I don't know. Ed, you're in. You gotta give us 100. 
Of course, they want me in. Yeah, so a lot of these guys, we we hang out outside of the felt, so everybody you know is is aware. So it was asked and they made sure that it was okay. That again, coming out of the booth, Danny Marks with the Queens in the cutoff, gonna make it a buck. Hundred. Looks like we're going multi-way to this flop. Yeah, and this is interesting, interesting, interesting board here. D-Dub leads out with a flush draw. Bridge Mike calls a top pair. Danny Marks with an over pair to the board. I think Mike's going to fold here. He probably knows that Danny has an over pair here. Yeah. Yeah, and he does lay, lay, lay it down. Yeah, tur new tournament champ, yeah. OFC. Yeah, Yeah, it's going to be tough for D-Dub to continue in this spot. I was hoping to pick up some additional equity, maybe with cards that... Obviously, the flush would have been nice, but potential straight cards. RL from Chatsville. Hi, my name is RL and I am a poker DJ. Welcome to Poker House Dallas, Poker House Live. We support your DJ. We got equal opportunity. This is a no judgment live stream. RL, so who have you played with specifically on this stream? And if you're from the Dallas area, whether or not you're from the Dallas area, if you want to come play the live stream, let us know. Let us know what stakes. 5-5-10, five, 5-10 five, ten, five, ten quarter. And again, the net game is still on. I'm just going to check really quick to see. Four players. Moneymaker actually has a nit button as well because he just jumped in. So I think they're going to require him to play the nit game. Scotty J here for Danny Marks. Danny Marks commentating yesterday with OFC. This is a really good lineup. Four card flop. We know what happens here. He's go what's going to happen is he's going to mix those cards up. No one kill their hand. Don't fold your hand. He's going to mix. He's going to mix it up at random. The floor is going to pull one card and make that the burn card. Yep. Yep. Put them upside down. At random, 
Eric's going to turn his back, going to turn back around, going to pick a card, make it his burn. New burn card. Flop. So. Yep. Yep. So now he's going to manual. Uh, there it is right there. King eight deuce. No one will. No, surprisingly, even though we are one, two, three, seven handed, no one with a king. D dub middle pair. Regis or Gator with middle pair as well. No, Kim has a flush draw. Sorry, straight draw. Got a twist. Okay. Got a tour. Straight flush draw. No tens have been burned that I recall seeing. Five of clubs doesn't change much of anything. Let's see if she's going to continue to barrel her equity here. She must be worried about somebody having a king in this spot. No, she's going to barrel. 250. 175, small sizing. It's going to be tough for D-Dub to continue here with just a pair of eights. Lots of bad river cards, spades, clubs. Doesn't have any backup outside of his eight. I mean, he could drill theoretically two pair, but it's not going to be a clean two pair, more than likely. Five viewers in the chat as we get to the tail end of this live stream. Danny Marks plus one. Jack nine suited D dub three pets out of the cutoff with sevens. Again, surprising the aggressive play seen from D dub tonight. Usually taking a loose, a passive approach in prior streams. Oh, Kim here gonna squeeze four bet. Just going to call. Surprising, though. I guess she's concerned about the three bet from DW here. So could have potentially squeezed here with this hand. No one with a king. I think DW is going to barrel here. I think Kim has to call one street. Danny's going to call with the jack high flush draws as well. Mr. Regis, it's gonna be tough. I mean, he does have second pair, but no backdoor diamonds. I wonder if Kim's actually gonna lay this down. She can't think jacks are good in this spot. Okay, she's gonna maybe to try to set mine here. She still actually does have the best hand. I wonder if Danny's gonna race here if he's thinking about it. He's gonna make the call. Yeah, he's in He's in position of Mr. Regis and Kim out of position to D dub, so lots of dangerous turn cards. Ten of hearts. Brings in some additional backdoor straight draws. Backdoor heart draws. Danny now not only a flush up but a gutter to a straight as well. It's gonna check. All the way through on a turn. Four of hearts. Mr. Regis, the Reverend Two Pair. Wow. And Mr. Regis just gets there. Oh. 
<laughs> and he gets there. <laughs> Kim thought that th I think Kim maybe thought that she had the best hand there. Mr. Regis having himself a nice little night tonight. Moneymaker now in the lineup. Gator still with the knit button. I'm going to check slightly. <laughs> Mr. Regis, <laughs> his turn to act doesn't know. He's going to raise on the button, man. Let's see what size I'm going to go. 200? And fought with the with the knit button as well. He knows what we all have, by the way. He's watching us play. He was literally telling me everybody's hands. Did you have fun with this? <laughs> nice little check here from Regis. Still with the best hand. Still currently with the best hand with the five of spades on the turn. Some weird straight draws get there. This is a better board for Fuat than this for Mr. Regis. Mr. Fuat, or Fuat knows that based off Regis's check on the flop. Decides the lead turn and gets Mr. Regis to fold. Nice little play there by Fuat. Been relatively quiet tonight. Again, I've seen him at lower stakes just barrel and get stuff in. Playing a little tighter than I've normally seen him, but still good action. Still has a very high VPIP. 50% VPIP, actually. Um, top three VPIP percentages. Oh, so okay, Mr. Mr. Reed's got a little cramp in his leg, so he's going to walk it off. So I was trying to re figure out what's going about. Double straddle on the triple straddle on this hand. So 25's on the double, 50's on triple. Little. Maker could potentially squeeze here. Yeah, good squeeze spot. I like it. Oh, oh see flopping two pair. Money maker here, good to a straight. Does no money maker knows that this is not a really good board for a squeezing portion of his range. 
This is a better board for OOC, and it's under the gun, defending straddle. Defending the straddle. Big bet here from OOC, 700, the 920. Okay, so you've been in hands with Alabama cap guy. That's Mr. Bridge Mike in the ninth seat. Yeah, Mr. Regis in the one seat taking a little break. Getting some cramps in his legs from sitting down. You got Paul Gator to Sony in the two seat. Texas Kim Stone in the three seat. Fwat. In the fourth seat, Danny Marks in the five seat, OC in the sixth seat, Moneymaker in the seventh seat, DW in the eighth seat, and Bridge Mike in the ninth seat. Four-way action here. Kim on the button. King nine suit and moneymaker. Moneymaker flopping top pair. Probably just gonna go to check call mode. Kim is gonna wisely check back. Two of hearts. Let's see moneymaker lead out here now. Jacks do need a little bit of protection here for overs. Like the sizing, about 60% pot, 55, 60% pot D dub here. It's gonna be tough for him to continue. He does have the the button on, nip button. Yeah, it just folds all the way around. Three players left. Gator, Bridge Mike, D Dub. I think D Dub's already paid. Okay, Gator's already paid it. Kim paid it. Uh, who are, who are the other players that have paid paid the nit button? I will get you Queen Miller winnings, Carlos. Kim here in the cutoff. What is she gonna come for the three bet? Just gonna make the call. Well, I can come in here with the with the three bet. Just gonna, just gonna call. Surprising, see some of these players, not three bet. Lots of there's gonna be lots of calls. Okay, we're gonna go six ways to the flop probably. Oh, five ways to the flop. The only player with the nit button on in this hand specifically is Gator, Queen High Board, two diamonds. Fought with top pair. He couldn't, he's making this. It's a very pot size bet. Looks very bluffy. 600 to 655. Pretty much pot. Wonder if money money is gonna call him one tree, and it looks like he is. Only one card to his pair. Gator's gonna fold. Kim is gonna fold. Nine of hearts, relative brick brick card. Check bet fold is what I'm thinking here. 800, 900. 
Good fold there by Moneymaker. Oh, see so how the small guy is going to squeeze Ace King of Clubs? Not a very good board for OFC here. Much better board for Mr. Regis. Although Mr. OFC does have backdoor clubs. Nine of Spades, much better. These boards are much better for D Dub and Mr. Regis. Both players are recognizing it. It just doesn't it's gonna be tough for Mr. Regis to continue. No back nor diamond, no diamond draw, no really good straight draws. I guess he thinks his three is good in this spot. Now he's just gonna fold. Same thing with OFC. Again, for those of you in the chat, let me know where you're from. I know I got some Brazilians in the chat here for Mr. Gator in the two seat. They got some West Virginians all as well. Definitely some DFW players. If you're new to the chat, let me know. Mr. Regis here with over pair to the board. Targeting Jack holding specifically. Bridge Mike going to call at least one street. Mr. Regis putting on a clinic on his 5 5 10 live stream debut here. Again, a nice variety of players some action players, some passive players, some tight aggressive players. Eight of clubs. Bringing some backdoor clubs. Oh, Mr. Regis is going to check for deception here. And maybe he's going to start. Oh, bad, bad river card. 1,200? Yeah, and I don't see how Mr. Regis can get away from this hand in this spot. What a tough, tough spot for Mr. Regis here.
I mean, flushes do get there. Chip jacks get there. Oh. Tough river card for Mr. Regis in that spot. <laughs> Surprising. Let's look at these cumulative wins losses again. Okay, so it looks really weird because there's a lots of, if you add up the math from the current winners. Right, relative to the delta on, on the losers. We did have a player that busted about an hour plus so ago. That was in for five or six K. So that's where the difference is. So, you know, Danny, Danny and OSC and Gate are up. No one up significantly big on this stream. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to be playing post stream. Bridge Mike here with Sue today. Is he gonna let it go? Gate or here gonna three bet with the ace check? Obviously, I like the three. Bet. It does have to be a little Definitely a hand that functions better as a three bet or a raise rather than just a call. I like to use ace jack. Obviously, it is like a three bet fold hand. Same thing. I think Doug is specifically re referring to playing poker in Texas based off how people are playing today. Bridge and Mike here with aces out of the small blind. Don't see either Fwat or Mr. Regis folding in this spot specifically. Mr. Regis is not going to New York just yet. Now, with this with this board, you could be checking back this board at some times. Obviously, ace. A lot of times you're gonna have the best hand. But a lot of times your opponents out of the big blind, the plus one and the straddle, gonna have kind of the range advantage on this board. You are are gonna have the over pairs, ace, king, ace, queens here. Good check back by Mr. Regis here. Oh, there, here, <laughs> Bridge, Bridge Mike got him earlier than Mr. Regis is gonna get him this hand. It's a little bit of redemption for Mr. Regis on this hand. He's going to come in for the raise. I wonder if Mike's going to be calling it here. A little small raise, 1,900. I'm 
Mike with the snap fold. Right about 10 minutes or so left left in the stream approximately. I think they're done out there in the boot. I think they're actually down. I think they're done out there on the actual felt. Again, with us being on the delay, we're still a little bit behind. Oh, shoot. I gave you the wrong one. No, it's all right. I got yeah. this one. Hey, hey. Eric Anderson in the booth with me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Let me turn this one up. It's cold in here. I like it. You're all snuggly up in a blanket. Oh, no, I'm tired. I'm still not feeling all that great. Oh, why did I come in here then? I'm going to get sick. That's all right. I'm just kidding. I don't get sick. Yeah, 15 minutes left exactly. They just got done. So how was it, uh, how was it on the back side? The front side looked pretty fun. Good. Good action. Good, good lineup. It's a fun lineup, too. It was a really good lineup. Oh, look at this moneymaker flopping the nut flush draw. Flat with a flush draw of himself. Oh, no. Gator here with, you know, bottom pair, some straight draw potentials. Moneymaker here. Moneymaker can come in for the raise. You can just call. Okay. So Regis is going to call. Gator is going to call. I wonder if Gator is going to come in for the raise. He could come in here for the squeeze. Okay. Is the second Nick game done yet? Yes. Poor Gator. <laughs> Did he win him once or twice? He lost twice. Okay. But he's still up. He's still up of 3,000, but he lost 1,800 in those Nick games. And then he won the hand, the exact hand after the Nick game was over. Oh, really? He ends up winning. One hand too late. Yeah, yeah. Interesting run out. No one with a five. Gator with the best hit with just a pair of sixes here. I want to see if one of these players is going to try to stab Mr. Regis. Going to bet, turn his pair of fours into a bluff. Snap fold by Gator Flot with nothing. Now Mr. Regis does have the best hand with yeah. just a pair of fours. Oh, Flot turns his eight high miss flush draw into a um, Miss flush draw into a bluff. Yeah, he goes from fourth place to betting two thousand dollars. I think a gangster call, Mr. Regis. I mean, Mr. Regis doesn't have a fold button, so that's the one guy I'm trying not to bluff. Wait, what's it called? I remember Kim. Kim would say, "Hey, if you if you know you if you know you can get a bluff through, make the bluff. But if you're only like 95 percent sure you're gonna get, get it through don't bluff you, you cannot bluff somebody <laughs> who's unbluffable who i mean i want to say he's unbluffable but he just major sir we just actually thinking about making the call here with just a pair of fours doesn't quite believe him it is a four liner to a straight let's listen to this table talk he says you got the five Shows a pair of fours. Everyone's like, what's going on? Are you seriously considering? He told him I have the five. Does he really think he has a five? He thinks he has a five. Oh, snap. And he's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> 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 he really did think it. Oh, oh he said. He, he, really, oh. he says, I thought you had the 5 8. I thought you flopped the open ender and had the 5 8. I thought I had the 5. <laughs> That's so funny, miss. I'm so glad he looked back at his cards. Oh, my goodness. I wish he didn't. I wish you would have called him and had four high or pair of fours. I wouldn't have shown it to you and said, hey, there's my 5. really thought you had 5, right? Yeah. 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 
That would have been so sick if he called. So I just turned it, turned it around and been like, I yeah. accidentally had a pair of fours. <laughs> but I can tell by his face, he's like, oh shit, I don't yeah. have a five. <laughs> he's like, I'll show you what I have, and he shows him. He's like, I have a five, and like, what's like, you said you had a five. Uh, he said you had a five. Do you have a five? <laughs> yeah, then he think five. double checks. He's like, wait a minute, I don't have a five. That's funny. Money maker here, Ace King suited, picking up some really to, re relatively decent hands in the 45 minutes he sat down. Dude, that was so funny. Definitely a sick play by Fuat there. Would have even have been sicker if he would just like. <laughs> no, oh, Fuat here. Look at Fuat coming in nasty. Four bet. Hey, Dougie, Fuat didn't say he had a five. Oh Mr. God. Regis said, I have a five. Yeah. Mr. Regis thought he had the straight. Look at this. Flat three being the five twos offsuit out of position. Now, unfortunately, Moneymaker doesn't even have like an over, like over pair. Anything. He doesn't have back door outs. He just has an Yeah. Flat like representing like tens. Tens. This hand is interesting. I, I don't hate Moneymaker's call here. It's not a really good board for Fouad's three betting range. He does get potentially counterfeited here, though. Seven hundred into thirteen hundred, about fifty-five percent pot, just slightly over half pot. There's some portions, that, there's some instances where Ace High is the best hand. In some instances, against a player like Fouad, potentially. Yeah, I don't hate the call here. You could be putting them on like king queen suited, miss draws, you know, so weaker ace highs. I would like to uh, raise there. For a pre flop? For a money maker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Could have, he could have four bet pre flop there, ace king suited. Yeah, as soon as, like, I, I I thought Regis was trolling at first. He's like, I, I like, 100% thought he was trolling. And he, like, he, like, looked at his cards and then his, his, his eyebrows, eyes, wow. his eyebrows pursed up. And I was like, he really thinks he has a five. Yeah, he thought he did. He, he thought he was showing the five. We've just got a few hands left. Yeah, probably one or two more hands left, approximately. Pretty decent crowd in the chat tonight. Oh, look at this. Here's the thing. Fuat was being super aggressive those last two hands, right? Now he's picking it up. Now he has kings. I, I can see OFC coming in for a three bet here. Yeah. Pretty standard three bet, about 450? It's a big bet, 425. Yeah. <coughs> what do you do if you're Fuat? Rip it? Yeah, and this is like the third time tonight this has happened where OFC made huge laydowns with ace queen suited against pocket kings, I think, or pocket queens once or something. Well, he had ace queen suited against Kim, who four. So Danny opened. I think he just called. Here, let's listen oh. to the table for a second. He's fallen. Shows him. Shows the kings. Kind of value him to self there. I mean, unless he was worried about handling with ace, containing ace, and flopping ace. You know, some people play like that at times. Oh, it's super easy just to pick up the five, six hundred dollars yeah. that's out there. So, well, there was a hand where Danny opened. No, Kim opened, Danny three bet, OFC just called. It came back around to Kim, and she just called four bet on the button with ace four offsuit and got it through. Oh, yeah, against uh, Danny and OFC. OFC had ace queen suited. Yeah. I think he had ace queen suited. Yeah, ace queen suited. He showed it, and then, she, yeah, that's right. That's right. So 
So they are going to be moving to the high stakes stream, it sounds like. It is a little chilly out there. Oh, is that what's going on? They're yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still playing. They're playing post stream. Oh, I knew they were playing. I didn't know why they wanted to move. I didn't know it was because it was cold. Oh, Mr. Regis was cold. Oh, yeah. I helped him put his coat on. Yeah, he was a little chilly. It's pretty chilly in here. Yeah, I, I like it. Came on the button. Ace Adolf suit. Regis with a pair of nines and does not like four. Yeah, Moneymaker getting a double straddles on. Yeah, going six ways to this flop. All Broadway cards. Oh, let's see here. Kim with middle pair. No one with a king, correct? But Mr. Regis currently with the best hand pocket nines. Watch is going to bet open ender here. Yeah, DW fires out there. Calls He's going to call. Five. Mr. Regis is probably going to make the call. Kim is going to gonna call to try to spike two pair, I think. Yeah. An eight would be horrible for DW. Five clubs. Uh, Mr. Regis still currently with the best hand. I think what? D dub. Fwat checks. DW leads out. Mr. Richardson call. Kim's gonna. I think she should be laying it down here. Someone more than likely, even though no one. She's got to put somebody on a king. She's still gonna make the call here. I call if I'm Fwat. There's yeah. 1600 in the pot. Uh, uh, he's actually oh. getting the right. He's actually getting the he's correct getting price. Really good odds. Getting the right. He's uh, actually it's, getting the right price. It's, yeah, it's a Badoogie board, so you're not worried. You know, if you hit your flush, if you hit your straight, it's good. There's yeah. no counterfeit outs for the flush. D Dub is gonna barrel. Is he? Uh, is he bluffing, or is he value betting? I think he's value betting. Uh, I don't know. That's such a weird bet size. You're gonna bet three twenty five into seventeen hundred. It's like. A weird value. blocker bet. Yeah, it's I a block. I think he thinks he's value betting the eight because all the draws miss. Maybe I, I don't know. It's really weird. D Dub's taking some unusual, unorthodox lines. Yeah, and Kim just—it's gonna be tough for Kim to. It was a rough night for D W. Let's go, Mr. Regis. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be like that. It's a weird spot. It's a weird bet size. And again, DW is taking some unorthodox lines tonight. He's been aggressive in spots as he hasn't been aggressive as before in the past. Um, he's taken some kind of like loose passive lines before in the past. Right. He kind of like check calls, check calls, and barrels maybe a little bit of equity, but doesn't like double barrel, triple barrel. But he was double barrel and triple barreling, double barrel and triple barreling tonight a little bit, so... He's picked up the aggression, kind of like Carlos over the past few streams. Even Bridge Mike picking up the, the aggression as well. Bridge Mike card distribution tonight wasn't as wasn't all that great. And what's fun about this group, like they've all played against each other, with the exception of Nate, Nasty Nate, who who felt it earlier in the stream. Right. All these players have played with each other in some capacity either a at here either here on a live stream down the road at tch with a two five round of each so all these players have some rapport with each other speaking of nasty nate did you see he he actually won the nick game busting out that last hand so when he got his hundred dollars he just tipped it to the dealer oh that's nice he just, he just. I. That's what you meant. Okay, yeah. I was trying to figure out what you meant by that. They, they called him back to give him his hundred dollars, and he just tossed it to the dealer. Good game. Yeah. He had some tough spots, and again, I think if I lost five k, I'd walk away with a hundred dollars. I wouldn't feel like tipping it. Yeah. But. Oh wow, D Dub just gonna ship it. Gator three bets to four hundred with a seven nine suited, and. No, neither one of them can call now. Yeah. Like, Never mind. I wanted to, I wanted to do something spicy for the last hand, but uh, not gonna happen. And I, so every time I get a new player, like especially again like Nate, I like, 
I get some texts multiple times yep. a week, and I'm like, hey, like I want to play the Friday stream or the Saturday stream. I was like, hey, let's set up a phone call because I don't think you understand. I was like, have you actually watched our streams? They're we, like, we've no. We've had that happen where people go, yeah. oh, 136 with a 2K buy-in? No problem. Yeah. I'm there. I'll, I'll bring 3K. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay. And I was like, oh, 5510? What about the straddles? Like 25 is always on. Yeah. 50 is going to be on at times. I'm like, the game plays way you're bigger. In, you're in Texas. Yeah. It's like, it's like it, if OC is in the lineup, the game's going to play really big. Danny's going to, it's going to play big. Moneymaker's going to play big. You're going to add on. Like, you're going to add on. Yeah. Like, let's do some math really quickly. We got 15 plus 11 is 26, 36, 37, 47, 57. Uh, let's call it 67. It's, Eighty something. Yeah, eighty thousand dollars, seventy five, eighty thousand dollars on the table. On a five five ten. I like I said, I watch a lot of other streams, you know, across the nation that play quote unquote like two like five ten and like biggest stack is maybe like eight K, ten K. You'll have your like outlier with a guy with like twenty K, but then after that's like seven, eight K, three K. Everybody's, you know, pushing ten K DW down to the bottom with forty one hundred. Uh speaking of uh OFC. Did he end up getting the high? Who had the highest VPIP? Uh, VPIP? Mr. Regis? Mr. Regis? Oh, uh, what? what? Mr. OFC? What? Turned it on at the end. Yeah, OFC? This is the first time I've never seen him win the VPIP game. Yeah, 50 and 50 with DF, DW and OFC. Speaking of DW and OFC, uh, did you go over that uh, $100 tournament? I did not. I didn't. Cause I tried to do it in the middle of the hand. So we, we yeah. can end with that. Let, let it let, let it finish off with that. Right on. Let's take a look at these last. Let's take a look at the. Now we'll look at the PFR. Flop raising. OFC Moneymaker. Not surprising. Again, Moneymaker was only in for about 45, 50 Money minutes tops. 8%. Uh, aggression frequency. Got DW up at the top. Of the he was course. very aggressive today. He turned it on. Yeah, this is the first stream I've ever seen him this aggressive pre-flop, post-flop. So, cumulative. Again, outside of Nate and DW, no significant yeah. big losers. And again, for those of you you're trying to probably add up the math, it may not make it's sense because be about five k off. Yeah, because there was a player earlier on that that felt it and obviously yeah. did not reload. So. You know, if you run the math, the delta is, is that guy. So the delta, the you know the is difference that a, is that a uh, accounting term? Yeah. So the delta. Uh, Danny, Bridge Mike up about seven, and Gator, Mister Regis, OFC fought, and Danny all up over two k. Kim down about a thousand. She was up about four four k five k early on. Uh, tried to get a bluff through to try to get rid of the nit button. Lost. Probably like 3K in that hand, give or take. Yeah. D-Dub lost a lot of his money earlier on on the stream, trying to get some barrels through. But outside of that, you know, good game, good game overall. So uh, outside of that, not, nothing too much, right? Tomorrow we got a $130, $130 buying 10K guarantee, 1 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 p.m., 2 p.m., always. 2 p.m., 20K starting stack, 20-minute levels. Um we hit 10k every time we've tried super close yeah like Can't one or get, two or well, it was it was exactly 100 last week for easter we were i was sweating that one i wanted to like i'm hey it's easter do we do we cancel this and they said no we'll make it work and we did we it was it was we were sweating it the whole time though it was fun i like a sweat uh that's it. Let's end with the uh, OFC and DW. I'll set it up for you. One hundred dollar weekly tournament last night. They got out of the booth, uh, commentating, and these are two of our biggest buy-in cash live streamers. Yeah, it's so and funny. For fun, they jumped into the one hundred dollar tournament. Um, yeah, DW because his wife was here for the empanadas. Yep. Uh, Sean post stream was like, oh, he eh. did. He wanted to play because he's like, man, I'm excited to play, but. I've been drinking all night, and yeah. I don't want to go jump in a big game and lose 10K. Let's just, what do you, you got a $100 tournament? Let me jump into that. And it ships it. So, great. So, we're going to end on our new tournament chap cash player up up today, up 3K, up $1,000 yesterday from a tournament win. $1,008. Yeah, $1,008, a yellow bird. So, yeah. 
OFC new tournament champ here at Poker House Dallas Poker House Live. We're going to end with him and his tournament win, his little video that Eric and I put. Uh, I didn't, not I, because I didn't know how to do well, it. You suggested it, and then I did it. So that's teamwork. Yeah. So <laughs> I thought it'd be fun. I think I think when OFC goes back and it'll watches this stream, yeah, he'll, he'll enjoy it. So we're going to end that off tomorrow. Next gen tomorrow. Uh, next gen two five live stream from six to yep. ten p.m. tomorrow. It'll be super fun. All right, so here we go. We're going to end with this. You guys have a good evening. That's it for us here at Poker House Dallas, Poker House Live. Oh, my God. Ace Deuce against Ace Nine of Hearts. Come on, Deuce. Oh, a tray? Are you gonna put a tray out there? But it, wait, yeah, we don't need a chop. A tray? Why don't we give you a chop? Oh, I thought it was for a second. <laughs> he did care no, a Alright, we are all in. We got the KQ of hearts against the K10 on an 8-9-10. DW's got a gut shot straight flush draw versus top pair, top kicker. Let's go. Needs a queen or a... Oh, the heart takes it. That's it. Straight double. Oh, Two pair. Two pair for OFC. Flush for DW. Oh, it's uh, it's going to be even in chefs. It's getting close. Let's go. We got KQ versus oh. Trey Trey. King in the window. Oh. Three. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. No, I'm almost dead now.